Shack at the bottles getting nippy up the crack and we stacking chips all of it's what all I want it. plus money winners that's what I'm on you can say I'm gone I prefer elevated pub sports radio time to get educated get produced lead the juice letting loose with so much abuse that the bookies want to call a truce they getting slaughtered can't forget Jeff and low baggers in the chat that's a lethal weapon to be pubbing What up, cappers, gamblers, punters, hustlers, low bag girls? Happy Wednesday, February 21st to all of you. Thank you for watching. Benny with the bag right here on Pub Sports Radio. Uh, you know, we invest all this money into our action. And, uh, you know, last night was a roller coaster ride. I, I for whatever reason, I, I'm sort of a cup's half full guy. I'm sitting here thinking I can have a big night. And it was close. It was close. I ended up with that basically a free roll on the Jackets first period, and the Kings scored with a minute left. You know, we pulled a slight profit in NHL and college basketball, which is fine. We need to stack winning days. But, man, you know, when San Francisco covered to finish off the night and, and finish off the night in the black, which ended up being an important spot uh, just because I went 3-3 three and three in NHL and then 5-4 and four in college basketball, I was like, oh, God, you know, you want to sit there and at least have $500 or, or, or something with all of the work and all the roller coaster ride of emotions watching all these games. But this is the life we chose, and I love it. I, I enjoyed last night. Uh, any day in the black is a good day. Uh, I just would like to profit a little more. Uh, than I did last night, and we'll have the opportunity to do that again right here. And we are lucky. We are fortunate that we have, you know, a bankroll so that we can attack the board and, you know, enjoy the fruits of our labor or, you know, become irate with uh, what's happening out there on the floor. So I'm very excited to be here with you guys right now. I'm very excited to get my card together. Uh, we have NHL first and then we have college basketball. So we have C-Mac for NHL and college basketball. Then we have Dabby Cab for college basketball. Uh, Dabby Cab lost with Memphis first half on Thursday. That stopped his six-game winning streak here on the show. He's having a great season. Then we have Mikey Money, star of the Pimp Slap Play of the Day, and last call, closing it up. And they've got, they all got lots of games. So uh, no NBA, no problem. We have a ton of action for you guys. And it's great to see all of you guys. Uh, first off... Off the hop, uh, we have you know one of our family members in, in a tough spot right now, uh, dealing with, with uh, medical issues with his parents and, and you know, family. So, uh, if you guys have ever capped with Nut Flush Allen, who's such a big part of our show, if you ever have, uh, just reach out, let him know that um, we're there for him, and and everything is going to be okay, and he's going to lead his family through this, and then and that's that. I mean, there's no I don't know, happy way of talking about it. It's very tough. It's difficult. And sometimes there's nothing you can do. Things are out of your control. And all you can do is be there for your family. And we know that Nut Flush is going to do that. And what what a guy he is, what a family he has. And so if you've ever capped with Nut Flush, just reach out and tell him that you love him and that we're there for him. Great to see all of you guys here in the chat. Brian Watson ready to get to work. Kong's clips in the house. Morgan Spooner, Oklahoma State plus 10, UNLV minus 6, Jacksonville State minus 6, and New Mexico minus 6.5. Uh, for those of you, again, when you're building your own worksheet, remember that in the description of our video will be our entire schedule. Uh, and, you know, what, what Mikey's going to talk about, what c is going to talk about, what a Dabby Cab's going to talk about what game. So they're all in our schedule right now. And there's a whole lot of them. So if you want to copy and paste the schedule just for your note taking, uh, that's basically why it's there. Uh, I put, I mean, it's all, you know, it's helpful for, for Jose and I to know what the hell's going on. But it, in my mind, when I first put it there, I thought, well, then any capper watching the show can just copy and paste the description, which is just the games 
and then their worksheet is already set up uh, for note taking uh, purposes. So, uh, but our guy Morgan Spooner, another sign of, of what we do here as a squad, uh, getting his action here for us, uh, sharing his hard work, sharing his angles. Shout out to Morgan Spooner. Uh, thank you. Uh, and Juan Ruiz, I meant to send you a message on X, but you won our horse race yesterday, $50 American for you. And thank you uh, for all our members and especially our gold members. Thank you. A Viper NB in the house, Andrew G, Mikey Money, Tori Coker, Wine Time Sports in the house, Rocco Rogers, Serious Business, Jared TG said 3 no in NHL last night, all plus money plays. Let's do it again. I love it, Jared. Justin McKelvey, Stacks play today is the Miami Hurricanes, a plus six and a half. Uh, again, I, I certainly felt like I left money on the table not joining everybody on Utah State. We'll go over my action here in a second, but wasn't it great to see Stacks? Taint and spreadsheet all cash. And Mikey Money was all over Utah State as well. Uh, and Mikey Money is talking about that very basketball game uh, that you have, Justin. So Justin is on the Hurricanes, Miami Hurricanes. Let's uh, copy and paste that here uh, so we can talk about it when we discuss all of that. And uh, Razor Sharp Picks gifting a Pub Sports Radio membership. Uh, shout out to our guy, Razor. Uh, I absolutely uh, I love it. Thank you, Razor. Uh, giving everybody a shout out and gifting a Pub Sports Radio membership. Thank you, Razor. Uh, Dan Kelly uh, just went to bet Troy Torrance of uh, St. John Georgetown under 150 and a half. They post 50 minutes ago. It's already moved to 149. Uh, it's fast. Um, totals are a uh, it's, you need that uh, edge. You can't take a, a, a an off number on totals at all. Not that you should on sides, but I do find it a little easier working with sides. Great to see all of you guys. Uh, and Rocco Rogers says the BYU first half train keeps rolling. A smooth balls play of the day is James Madison. That is another game we're talking about. The most, the what I believe will probably end up being the most uh, contentious game of our card is a game that all of our cappers will be talking about. All three of our cappers are opening uh, their show with uh, Illinois, Penn State. So every single one of our cappers will be opening with that. But this James Madison spot for the smooth balls play of the day is a game that Mikey Money is talking about. Is that right? I thought it was. Yes, James Madison, Dukes, Marshall, Thundering, Herd, smooth balls play of the day uh, is in. Let's get that set up. All right, uh, we got Bo Jackson ready to go. Says Austin's back home tonight. Go Leafs, go. Uh, Austin is back home. Austin Matthews with 49 goals. Well, Willie scores 50th in his home city. I, all of a sudden over the last, I don't know, two or two hours or so, it was a late coming thing. I badly want to bet Arizona. Ten straight losses. I don't know what the hell's wrong with me. But I just, you know, with my time with this leaf squad it's right when you think they've got everything together that they let you down and we'll talk all about that game but i, I would love to to go into the night and only have the oilers minus one on my card but there's two spots and the coyotes being one of them that's just uh, calling out to me Collins clips i shout out to mikey m on last call killing it a uh, daily sammy Culver says thank you jimmy and pete for the jets pick and all the birthday love in the chat we got the dapper capper north ender ready to go slatsy says sabers on dad's trip to montreal caulfield has missed the last three practices big lean to the sabers god they're a hard team to uh to figure out you know and, and we're gonna talk about it here uh, right off the hop but the dad's trips you got to think it galvanizes them don't you um great notes Latsy, and we'll discuss all of that uh north henderson ended up four and two but feel it could have done uh, so much better there's von polo in the uh, house jpz ready to get to work joseph thompson bo jackson what a great great group great to see all of you guys here ready to rock brian watson billy friedrich uh, moving on the under 155 and a half in that james madison spot and uh, also i want to give a shout out to jose bouquet uh, also not only did he uh, fill in for me with a plum on Wednesday and Thursday, but he did a great job of collecting all of the action from everybody. And it's really difficult. It's not easy. And he's, he's multitasking. So Jose, thank you for that. Uh, all of the records for everybody that you'll see on the show are completely up to date. And uh, thank you, Jose, for doing such a great job with the uh, 
record keeping uh, or, or the action uh, tracking the action or whatever the hell it is. Okay, so uh, JMU Marshall under 155 and a half. We'll get that right under uh, the smooth balls play of the – oh, no, that's – sorry, that was wrong one. Let's move over here. Wait, uh, there, get right under the smooth balls play of the day here. And uh, I'm excited. Sammy Comer, uh, Patapova Zhang over 21 and a half games in the WTA Dubai. I'm ready to get to work. Uh, Al Cervix says, can I get an update on Sharpie? He is a land. He's made. He's uh, Murfreesboro. He's landed. His feet are on the ground in Murfreesboro. It's freezing cold. That's the update that we have uh, from him. It's not going to be easy from handling this first winter, uh, even though we're almost in March. Uh, Al Cervix says, I miss Sharpie horribly. What is going on? Uh, the, uh, you know, uh, You'll see lots more Sharpie. Just getting this uh, shit together. That's all it's happening. It's getting, it's getting everything together. Andrew G says, they asked Nylander, Nylander why are the Leafs playing so hard and good? He said, for Morgan Riley. I think they go 5-0 and without him. Yes, Andrew G, we're going to talk all about that. We're going to talk all of uh, about that. Uh, Nancy Nate says, let's race horses out of Jose's pocket. I like that. Uh, I like that. Uh, that. Jose did that. We both did that. Yes, let's see. 4 0 since Riley's suspension. And Rocco Rogers says, Kyrie's kind of team total over 2.5 minus 124. Stimmy OG is big on Penn State plus 8. So again, we will be talking about that with every single capper here on our show. Let me copy and paste that. Uh, Razor 2 and 1 yesterday. North End says, Creighton was a huge bet for me. Uh, and then he took 150 of the winnings to put on Creighton at 50 to 1 to win the Natty. I love it. Uh, I love it, North Ender. I love it. Richie Rich in the house. Great to see you. Uh, oh, wow. Okay. Uh, great job, Richie Rich. I will uh, check that out, my man. I will check that out. Subhuman Gaucho soccer play today. Luton Town over three and a half corners at plus 132. Game kicks off at 2.30 p.m. Eastern. Subhuman Gaucho, Luton Town over three and a half. And then one more thing before we get started. Every single day, somebody in the comment section says, uh, why won't you put the why is the chat not on so let me just say this again and maybe i'll have to say it every couple weeks here but the chat is on every single one of our shows we know how important the chat is you just got to give it about 30 minutes for it to download if you watch the show on replay right after the show ends you won't get the chat it takes about 30 minutes to an hour for the chat to download but please understand that we know how important the chat is we know how great the cappers are in the chat you know we, we really want to showcase their action as much as possible. And we would never have the show out there without the chat. So I'll have to say that every couple of weeks because every single day someone says, why did you not turn the chat on? Okay. Uh, AOD says he smells taint. I like that. Major Tom eats taint. Okay. A lot of good stuff happening here. A lot of good stuff happening here. Kent Davies. Uh, that's a Western Carolina spot. I imagine uh, here. Let me grab. That so is that a catamount spot? I'm, I'm just gonna copy and paste that here. Uh, let me get that under Morgan Spooner's action. Wine time sports, he's locked in as well. Uh, Penn State plus eight, Xavier minus five, Dayton minus two and a half, and Air Force plus six. And yes, let's see that Oilers price is going down. Look, I said it yesterday, uh, it doesn't matter in NHL, it's different, man. Uh, look at all the lines that went against me in NHL and, and, and they were, you know, very comfortable cashers uh, here. Uh, the Rangers went so heavy against me, but uh, let's just re quickly do a review of yesterday. Uh, Londo says, can you give us your best bet today? Yes, I can. Uh, it's the Edmonton Oilers. So here is the, uh, but that might change within college basketball capping with the squad. But uh, yesterday in NHL jets, a uh, minus one uh, cash Rangers minus one cash devils minus one was, uh, an atrocity and it hurts me. I still believe they're going to man up at the deadline, uh, but didn't like it. Uh, Minnesota Winnipeg first period under one and a half uh, was a loss. Uh, Blue Jackets first period plus 175 was a loss. And the Vancouver Colorado first period under one and a half plus 125 was a win. Uh, so overall plus 0 0.27 units. And I know the mistake I made. I was, I had two teams, the Winnipeg Jets and the Vancouver Canucks, where I was certain with their old school coaches that they would be as accountable defensively in the first period uh, as they'd ever been. I was certain of it. So I took first period unders in both of those. 
Now I end up up 0 0.25 units, but I should have been up 2.25 units. I should have only taken a Colorado under a half goal as well as a Minnesota wild under a half goal instead of the first period unders uh, that ate at me. It was a mistake. Uh, you know, it's one thing when you cap a game, right? You also have to bet it right. And I didn't do that. Uh, so that really ate at me, but uh, you know, we're just trying to get better every single day and, and get our unit size bigger every day. So uh, three and three plus 0 0.27 units in NHL in college basketball, five and four plus 0 0.56 units. Uh, Missouri first half a uh, plus seven was uh, they, you know, covered outright the first half. They covered the full game. Boston college plus three and a half Fordham plus six and a half. Uh, that upset me. You know, they're, you know, winning with 18 minutes left and, and lose by 20. Uh, that upset me. Fordham plus six and a half was a loser. Toledo minus two was a winner. Buffalo minus two and a half. Uh, you know, we talked about putting lipstick on the pig. Look, I put lipstick on the North Illinois lips, and that didn't work. That was a loser. But Buffalo minus two and a half. There was some discussion of, of whether the market was telling us that it was a winning bet. Some said that it should be at three, which it where is where it closed. Uh, I disagree. A, a team that's three and 22 and one and 11 in conference as a favorite says it all. Uh, said it all there. Uh, and then those were my first bets. Uh, the Those seven bets I, I needed to get out there. And then I sat with the rest of the card, the liens that I had. I sat with them and sat with them. And I, I tried to only move on the spots where the market was telling me I had an edge. Uh, I wanted to back Wisconsin first half and full game yesterday, but that line wasn't moving and the bigger 70% of the money was on Wisconsin. And, and if the market is not, it's going to tell me that there's no edge here. I'm not going to bet it. Uh, they did tell me there was an edge with Creighton at plus two and a half. And I liked the opportunity of San Francisco. Uh, you know, this was also a wine time sports look on San Francisco. I liked the opportunity of San Francisco going uh, into St. Mary's after losing uh, at home badly against St. Mary's. I liked that opportunity. So that wasn't necessarily the market telling me I had an edge because that had moved from seven to seven and a half. But I still trusted it. Adding those two bets is the reason why I had the winning day. Five and four plus 0 0.56 units. That is that. Let's get to work. Let's bring on your first guest. Uh, when I see him backstage, I well, I know he's backstage. But when that camera comes on, we will bring him on right away. He's joining us here for NHL and college basketball. But let's get right to work because we have discussed this hockey game already in the chat so let's roll 7 p.m eastern the buffalo sabers 24 27 and 4 12 11 and 3 on the road at the montreal canadians 22 25 and 8 11 15 and 3 at home we're at bell center in montreal quebec your guest is ready to rock with us here uh slides says my biggest mistake not taking into account devils coming off a major event win in front of seventy thousand had to be a letdown you know slatsy it wasn't for the rangers it wasn't for the islanders uh, that was in our capping. I just want to fade the Capitals as much as possible, you know. And, but I hear, I hear, I hear what you're saying, Slatsy. And I guess then you must have stayed off the Islanders and Rangers here. I, I did stay off the Islanders too. But uh, I hear what you're saying, Slatsy. Let's bring on the star of Wednesdays here on Betting with the Bag, NHL and college basketball ahead of us. Please welcome from Las Vegas, Nevada, Mickey, 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 Mac Daddy in the house. C Mac, how are you, my man? Jimmy Jimmy, great to see you. I'm glad uh, you're doing better off the uh, the flu there, the little, the little cold. Oh uh, yeah, it was. Oh, I mean, I love the. I'm sure it was worse than references. That. No, <laughs> it, you know, it wasn't. It wasn't so bad. But then you know, Carter was spent the night in the hospital as well. I wasn't in. The, I mean, I didn't have to spend the night in the hospital. Carter did. Was in the hospital for 30 hours. Like it really took a chunk out of us. But we are all back in business and ready to attack C-Max. So let's get into this Sabres Hab spot. So the first thing that we've been, you know, have discussed in the chat, Slatsy saying Sabres on a dad's trip to Montreal. Uh, Caulfield uh, missed last three practices. Big lean on the Sabres. And this is a tricky spot. Uh, I really, uh, I don't feel like, I, I just feel like the, I think that in all honesty, that the Sabres may be, the most difficult team to cap in the NHL yeah. right now. I, I, I just, and I'll go over a couple of the reasons why. I mean, we're sitting here right now with JJ Paterka as, you know, their best player. I mean, Middlestad's been great. Cousins hasn't really stepped up. And then, you know, where? 
where the hell is Tage Thompson? And we'll talk about mm -hmm. that here in a second. But let's talk about the line history for this one. We're using pinnacle line moves. Buffalo opening up at minus 132. They're now minus 138. Six cents of movement in their direction. And then from a total side of things here, we are sitting with a six and a half a juice to the over, minus 108 to the over. Uh, this opened minus 120 to the over. So we have had a legitimate move towards the under. Stimmy OGs on Montreal. Richie Rich leaning towards Montreal and the over. And Rez Mob in the house. Great to see you, Rez Mob. And Top Crocodile says, love when Stimmy OG and Wine Time Sports are on the same side. Yeah, I feel that uh, Top Crocodile. So here we go. Buffalo power play is being anemic this year it's confused me but the issue is tage thompson he is the issue there's dc capper uh, in the house grade cu dc page is the issue i mean last year he scores 47 goals puts up 94 points he's six six i mean at that point you're like this guy is go is the, out of your wildest dreams he's every coach's dream to have on the first line he gets the huge contract and he has, what, 16 goals and 32 points. He's by far the worst plus minus on the hockey team. And I mean, like, by far. It's just it's it's just so shocking. And Sabres fans must be smacking their head against the wall watching this kid play. Imagine having a six foot six, 47 goal scorer at his age, and then he just does nothing the following year. Uh, it's tricky. Buffalo's power play at 14.6%, penalty killing at 79.8%. Montreal power play at 20.1%, penalty killing at 74%. Buffalo comes in off their second loss in three games, 4-3 at home to Anaheim on Monday night. Now, they outshot Anaheim 37-14. to 14. You know, they, they really dominated the game, uh, but Gibson stood on his head, and you can't trust Lokanen. At this point, now Owen Power, their number one overall pick a couple years ago, uh, out with the hand injury, and Matias Samuelson has been out, and he's out for the rest of the season. He's been out for a while, so now we have this Buffalo Saber team that's missing two of their top three defensemen. Two of their top three defensemen that they were planning on all year aren't there. Now Victor Olafson's out with an illness. Who cares? He's done absolutely nothing this year. What a horrible contract! They're missing 2028 overall pick Jack Quinn. He's going to be out until late March. He's going to be really, really good. I believe in Jack Quinn. And so now I would have to take the Buffalo Sabres uh, on the road as a favorite without two of their top three defensemen. And how can I do that? How can I put money on that? Now you could say what Slatsy's probably thinking. It's a dad's trip. The dads are there. They're going to step up in front of their dads. I guess. Or maybe it's just mm -hmm. the fade of the Habs. They're coming off their second straight loss, fourth in their last five games, 4-3 home to the Capitals on Saturday. This is the first of a back-to-back. -back. They play at Pittsburgh tomorrow night. I do think that the Habs are rebuilding in the right way. Uh, you know, I really do. I think in two years they're going to be a really good hockey team. Uh, it's too bad they had to trade Monaghan, uh, but they had to, at that point, get value from him, unfortunately, I get, I guess. Uh, Take it away, C-Mac. Is, is this a spot where you want to fade the Habs? Because I'd love to fade the Habs. I just don't know if I can do it with the Sabres. I, no way. I, I could do it with the Sabres, especially at this price. I mean, I just don't know why you'd want to put your money really on them. They've been one of the most difficult caps like you talked about all year. I think it's just that one right before the break. And it was the Sharks kind of playing their worst hockey where they won two in a row. It just seems like it's consistent. Win, one, lose, one, win, one, lose, one. Uh, and people think, you know, Canadians, like you talked about, off the couple of the losses back to back, they hit the road trip, a quick two game. You mentioned Pittsburgh, and I think they're at New Jersey. Uh, yeah, Samuel Nett here, he has not been good. He's given up a ton of goals uh, in some of his starts. He hasn't started in a few games, but man, he got blasted. Uh, the last few times uh, between the pipes. I don't trust the Sabres, though. At this number, like, there's no way I could. I know it's the dad's trip. Talk about the dad's trip, mom's trip. I think the Preds just had their dads in Vegas after they got snubbed <laughs> from going to U2 or whatever uh, there. Uh, and they won. And it's been a pretty profitable thing when you've looked it up. I don't, yeah. I don't know. How good is it? 
Does it mean a bunch? There's our guy, Real Deal Prime. We know he loves the Sabres. He's a fan. But I don't trust him. You talk about Tate Thompson. He just goes, like, nowhere on the IC's games. It's just like, where has he gone? It's just like, it's just, it's like a ghost out there. And he talked about his size. He seems like he has all the tools. It just hasn't worked out. And hopefully he could get going uh, in this one. May I'd look to Skinner if you were looking uh, props in this one. And a lot of people hit it on the chat. I think it was Slatsy earlier. Canadians are a top, top line team. Uh, they're not very deep after that. But I could only be on the Habs in this game. Uh, it was just a lean for me. I haven't made a bet. But I'm tempted here at this price. Yeah, I'm. I'm just gonna stay away. Uh, there's some talk about Slavkovsky in the chat. He's gonna be really good. He's gonna be good. Uh, I love, you know, watching him kind of develop. I think he's gonna be. I did. The Habs are gonna be really good. It's too bad they couldn't keep Monahan. You know, it's too bad because Monahan resurrects his career. We thought he was done, and yeah. then he would have this real special connection with Montreal. Also, the dad's trip in Montreal. Your dad's in Montreal. Oh, wow. <laughs> oh, Jesus. With the, all the contact, the contact strip clubs. Oh, yes. Jesus. Those dads. Jesus. My God. I worry for the dads. I worry. The, one of the dads getting knocked out at a strip club. Hondo, for sure. Okay. Uh, that is Sabres Habs. Look, I just. Um, and Slatsy uh, says head to head with him. No, you're not head to head with him. He's off at this point. And. Um, so it's got to lean to the dads. Look, I, I get it. Um, I get the, I get it too. I, get it. I just don't trust the Sabers. Like I just, the, everything. I get the other side, the dads, and not at this price. Like you get the minus one twenty or less, and still I wouldn't feel comfortable. I guess it's just not a hockey team I want my money on, really, right now. Voodoo uh, Rangers. Look at JJ shots on goal. Paterka. God, there's some really good players that the Sabers have. I just don't. I don't get. I don't get how they've. I wished I was their manager over the last few years because Sammy Reinhart you know, would be on Thompson's line. But we can talk about that another time. Let's move on. No action for C-Mac. C-Mac possible move uh, later on with that game, but we are moving on. Okay, we move on. Uh, Slatsy says Montreal Strip Clubs are legendary. There is, it's just, uh, <laughs> ooh, good God. Okay, 7.30 p.m. Eastern, Philadelphia Flyers, 29, 20, and 7, 15, 8, and 5 on the road at the Chicago Blackhawks, 15, 38, and 3, 11, 14, and 2 at home, United Center, Chicago, Illinois. Samuel Urson put in a tough spot with the Carter Hart situation. Uh, he's been, you know, okay. Uh, 2.64 goals against average, 8, 98, save percentage, 3 shutouts. Uh, Mrazic has been so good. I can't believe I'm saying that, but I, I am. Uh, he's been very, very good. 13, 22, and 2. 2.99 goals against average. 909 save percentage. One shutout. Uh, both teams have horrific power plays. Philadelphia, 13.3. Chicago, 13.1. Now that Bedard's back, you know, it's it's obviously a boost to that Blackhawks power play. But Philadelphia's penalty killing is so good. 86.4%. Uh, uh, Ziggy Ball's looking at the Blackhawks plus one and a half. Nasty Nate says, when are NHL playoffs? I believe the playoffs start at like, I want to say like April 26th. Something like that. I think that the NBA playoffs start April 14th. Something like that. I'm actually I'm certain about that. I'm certain about the April 14th because I've got some NBA futures that I'm, you know, looking to cash as soon as possible. Uh, Dennis, Dennis Doron says he's, he's Dennis says he's down about 403.6 units in Montreal strip clubs. Okay, uh, Rocco Rogers moving on. Bedard goal. Bedard assist and over one and a half points for a Bedard. Let's take a look at the line history here for uh, this one. We have the total sitting at six. It's juiced to the under. It's at minus 102 to the over right now. Uh, we have seen this drop to five and a half twice. Right now it's at six, minus 110 to the under. At 8.51 a.m. it was minus 120 to the under. Uh, you know, I uh, the my want for unders uh, is gone with Bedard coming back. It's gone yeah. for me at this point from for, for the Blackhawks. Uh, this line opened up uh, Philadelphia minus 190. They're now minus 241. And I could have got them at minus 190. I could have got them on the minus one line at minus 190. I just, I just don't think they're that good of a hockey team. I told you I don't think they're going to make the playoffs. I bet them not to make the playoffs. And I've got even more on it because I have the Islanders to make the playoffs and the Devils to make the playoffs. And if either of those teams are going to make the playoffs, then either the Red Wings or the Flyers have to miss. 
you know, so Flyers coming off their second straight loss, 6-3 at MetLife Stadium in front of 70,000 people. Rasmus Ristolainen remains out of the lineup. Blackhawks coming off a 6-3 loss at Carolina on Monday night. Defenseman Connor Murphy and Nikita Zaitsev are both remain out of the lineup. Murphy plays 19 minutes and 51 seconds a game. I mean, that's a big loss. Uh, with it all said and done, oh, Soderblom is confirmed. Mm-hmm. Oh, that's a big piece of the puzzle. Interesting. And Rocks are you do saying seeing uh, Soderblom? Slats says Kurashev with points in six straight, playing well with a Bedard. Richie Rich is on the over six in this one, and Ziggy Balls is on Blackhawks plus one and a half. Rocker Rogers on the Hawks team total over two and a half. I, I mean, it's obviously it's too late for the Flyers at minus one ninety. I could have had them if I had known that when I do the show it's going to be minus two forty one. I probably should have moved on them, uh, but I didn't. Take it away for uh, uh, Julio Vila says best strip clubs, Atlanta, Houston, Miami, Vegas, and uh, L.A. Yes, Julio, but you sound like you've never crossed the border before. Take it away, C-Mac. Floor is yours here for the Flyers Blackhawks. Yeah, this is a, a maybe a tricky spot for the Flyers. What do we get from them? They're a, a hockey team that's just been on streaks all year long. You know, it seems like four wins. And they win three or four in a row, then they, they've hit another losing streak. I mean, they won four right before they dropped these last two to the Leafs uh, and Devils. Ports talked about it. One thing this total, I, I'm going to stay off because you mentioned with Bedard back. Jimmy, it's kind of like takeaway. You just want to get rid of Chicago and the unders. Uh, but this is a difficult stretch for the Flyers uh, of their season, I think, a little bit. Uh and this is a, this is a game I think they could limit the Blackhawks. I just I, I don't know how much with Bedard in. Obviously, it's better. We know that. But are we going to get any you know goals here from the Blackhawks? I had to stay off. I'd like to be on this under. I can't do it, and I can't be on the Flyers at this price. Uh, I just don't think they're a very good hockey team either. I just I just think they're very average. Uh, all the way around, and I don't want them on the road, even in Chicago. This could be. That's why I lean under. This could be two one three two, and maybe there are a lot of goals around here, but kind of just a tough game to go here uh, on the schedule. You know, they need a win, the Flyers. So uh, yeah, I'm off. I'm off too. But w- there's a lot of action to be had on the final three games, and maybe Dan Bonner's nailed it. Maybe his nail it says uh, this is a first period under one and a half. Flyers are 11 and 17 of the first period uh, under on the road this season. The best of the under in the league. Also four and one to the first period under the last five road games. I like that spot. Uh, mm-hmm. I like that spot a lot. So, okay. Uh, there you go. Uh, we are off these top two spots, but uh, I find the next three very interesting. And, and I've moved on the next one. Uh, 10 p.m. Eastern, Boston Bruins 33, 12, and 11, 15, 5, and 6 on the road at Edmonton Oilers 33, 18, and 1, 17, 6, and 1 at home. Rogers Place in Edmonton, Alberta. I've got Yulmark versus Stuart Skinner listed. Yulmark 16, 6, and 4, 2.72 goals against average 9, 14, 7, 7, 1 shot. It could be Swayman, but I got Yulmark listed. Then we have uh, Stuart Skinner 25, 12, and 1. Uh, 25, 12 and 1, 2.57 goals against average, 0.906 save percentage, two shutouts. A uh, Boston power play 23.4% uh, and penalty killing 81.4%. Now, I'm going to be fading the Bruins a lot down the stretch here. And they're not a bad hockey team. They're a good hockey team. They're a complete hockey team. But I do believe that the market uh, has valued them better than they are. And I'm going to be fading them quite often down the stretch. And how could they possibly, you know, they lose Patrice Bergeron, a first ballot Hall of Famer. They lose Krejci. I mean, of course. I mean, this. So you're acting, act, asking, you know, Coils and Zaka's and, and and players who who can't be. They they're incapable of being Bergeron and and Krejci. You're asking them to be that, you know. So so I do want that to be clear. As I fade the Bruins a lot down the stretch here, it's not that I think they're a bad team. I just think they're overvalued in the marketplace. Uh, Edmonton power play at 26.8%. Yes, it's not the 35% it was last year, you know, but it is a very strong penalty killing group. Good. Yeah. So to me, uh, and shout out to James Parm now being a member for a month. Richie Rich says his top plays Boston Edmonton under six and a half. So the Oilers coming off their second straight win, six three to Arizona on Monday. I don't I think that the market doesn't understand how dominant they are at home. I think that any chance against any team in the entire hockey league 
that we can get them on a plus money minus one spot has to be bet. And I also think that this is the best Oilers team since they won the Stanley Cup in 1990. And we're talking about that before the trade deadline. Uh, that 2005-06 Stanley Cup team that, you know, that ran all the way is not, not, you can't, you know. I went over all those, that team, and it was, Pronger was just the best defenseman in the NHL by far, and they just got hot at the right time. Uh, I'm on the Oilers minus one here. Uh, I think it's the best bet on the board. And the Bruins are going to be able to put a defensive game in place. I can understand Richie Rich's look on the under six and a half. Let's just touch on the line history here. Uh, right now, uh, Pinnacle is Edmonton minus 135. I, I got in when they were minus 137. Uh, they did get up to minus 145 around midnight. Uh, but they're now minus 135. And from a total side of things here, we have a six and a half and minus 120. Six and a half and minus 120. This uh, has dropped to six a couple times. Did open up at six. Uh, take it away here. And this is the only bet on the entire board that I've made coming into the show. That is the Oilers minus one. And Richie Rich, right? It's going to be a hell of a hell of a hockey game tonight. Take it away, C-Mac Bruins, Oilers. That's what I think, too, here. Uh, and I'm on what uh, on the under here with Richie Rich. Uh, give me the best number you can get, Jimmy. I just think we get playoff hockey here uh, in Edmonton. And an Oilers team before the break who just went on that crazy streak, not only winning, going under. Now they've come back, had some overs. They were just down. We'll get to the Coyotes down 3-2 and scored four goals. Uh, we'll get to them coming up next. Um, just buried them. So they've had four straight overs. Boston struggling on that homestand. It would probably be good for them to get out of Boston. You know, they've had success in Edmonton in the past. Um, and they need one here. And that was a big – that shootout was was a big win. They needed it against the Stars, you know, uh, in that 4-3 game. So – I just think we get tie hockey here. I want the under. This could uh, slap me in the face and there could be goals, but I think Boston comes to play. And Boston, the last, I don't know, three weeks or month, they've been awful. Dude, they can't score goals like someone put in there. Uh, yeah, they've been horrible on the power play. So, yeah, give me the under. I like it. I got the Oilers minus one at plus 119. And I, I like your under six and a half. I do. I, I, it makes real sense to me. You know, it makes real sense to me. I, you know, I might look, I, I think you guys are on the right track, absolutely on the right track. And I, I, I like it a lot. I like where you guys are at uh, quite a bit. Uh, Randall Sheffield in the house. Great to see you, Randall. Let's keep rolling. Next up for us, 10 p.m. Eastern, the Toronto Maple Leafs 30, 16, and 8. 15, 6, and 6 on the road at Arizona Coyotes, 23, 28, and 4, 15, 13, and 0 at home. And I have this sick need to, uh, you know, and it's and maybe I should just stop. And then that's why I haven't bet yet. But I have this need to, to fade the Maple Leafs here. I just, I've been down this road with them so often. So we're, there's so much of this uh, run there on is psychological. You know, and it's not model based. It's not numbers based. It's not like you know, it's it's all psychological. So let's talk about a couple of things that have happened here. Uh, so first off, first off, we have to start with the Morgan Riley suspension. You know, when Lilgren got hurt about five five weeks ago or got hammered, nobody came to his defense. The Leafs did nothing, and it was just appalling. And you could say, oh, that's today's NHL. Or you could open hand slap all of them in the face. And that's sort of what, you know, Keith did. He was very, very, very upset at what a bunch of, uh, uh, you know, I'm editing myself, but how they were playing and how they were defending each other. So I liked it when Morgan Riley hammered Ridley Gregg. Show some emotion. Uh, I would have, you know, liked it if he had to just put his shoulder into him. You know, I, I guess I don't like the cross check as much, but. You know, it's a spur of the moment thing. And he sh they showed emotion and the team followed suit. And, and now they've won, you know, four straight. So Morgan Riley's suspension and Mark Giordano has been uh, missed the last game due to the death of his father. So we're not sure if he's coming back. He's probably, uh, you never know. Uh, you never know. Uh, but he's probably back. So you have 
Giordano, who's not been skating for a few days, and then you have Morgan Riley, uh, you know, still suspended. This is the first of a back to back. They play at Vegas tomorrow night. This is just too too mm-hmm. much. Now, is this enough for you to say, look, this team that's lost ten straight? I, I'm gonna, I want to back. I want to back them so badly. I want to back them so badly. Slatsy says, how does Matthews not score at least one goal here? Sitting at 49 from uh, from Arizona, he's on at minus 120. If I was betting player yeah. props, I would, you know, be interested. Andrew G says Matthews in front of his whole extended family. So here is another level of pressure and annoyance, and your star player on the Leafs having to care about figure out all these tickets and do all these things. Okay, so here's la- layers, layers, layers that where so I don't want the Leafs. Now let me add to it, Carol Vomelka. Uh, has not had a very good season. It's hard being a backup. You never know when you're going to go in. Uh, we have Connor Ingram, who is listed. I don't know why he's listed. Uh, Connor Ingram should be playing. Uh, or sorry, uh, should sorry. He's supposed to be out for seven to ten days. So Vimelka should be playing. This is day six of the seven to ten days that Connor Ingram was expected to be out. So I expect Vimelka, and I expect Vimelka to play well. I do because now he knows he's starting to get some consistency. Be well, Razor Sharp, uh, my man. And thank you so much for gifting the Pop Sports Radio membership, my man. Razor. So, and then, so there you go. So I just see levels of pressure. I, obviously, I'm talking myself into the Coyotes now. Uh, so let's take a look at. So, first off, Toronto Power Play 28.4%, Penalty King is 77.6%. You know, you don't have Morgan Riley on the point. Uh, I think that hurts, obviously hurts their power play a little bit, but they have snipers all over. Arizona's had a good power play all year, 21.5%, penalty killing 79.2%. Let's get into the line history here. First off, this total is at 6.5, and, and it's juiced to the over. Oh, by the way, we got you that under 6.5 and, and minus 117. Uh, Heritage had it under everything else. Uh, but here, this 6.5 uh, at Pinnacle is minus 118 to the over. Uh, it opened up at minus 121 to the over. So a three cent move uh, towards the under. Then from a money line standpoint here, we have Arizona at plus 160. Uh, you know, they opened up at plus 179. Uh, this is a team that's lost 10 straight. Yes, I, I should have moved on it at plus 170 or plus 175 or, or whatever. And maybe I shouldn't even move on it after the show. Maybe I should wait till the public comes back in on the lease. Uh, Bo Jackson saying Vimelka 2-0 at home against the Maple Leafs. So the Arizona's lost 10 straight. And C-Mac touched on that 6-3 loss at home to the Islanders on Monday. They're up 3-2 in the third period. And I like betting on teams who just played a great team. Now, I, I do think the Leafs are a very strong team. So so I can, what, not trust Samsonov on the road? I can talk about all this, you know, this, this pressure and then having to leave the fall that night. To Vegas, I can talk about Riley being suspended still, Giordano dealing with the death of his father, Matthews going for his 50th in front of all his family. Yes, I'm going to bet the Coyotes here. Take it away for us here, C-Mac Leafs Coyotes. DC Capper, what up, my man? I'm good. I hope you're doing well. Ron Crawford up in here. Spreadsheet play the day. I'm with you here, <laughs> Jimmy. You, uh, you were ripping it there. Uh, this is just like... It's just crazy. I mean, we want this team's lost 10 in a row uh, with the Yotes, but it's like, it's just the play. The Leafs have looked so good uh, as of late. You mentioned since Riley, they've won what, four in a row. I mean, that 9 2 went over the Ducks was just, uh, they just killed them. This is like the classic spot for them. And they've struggled here against Arizona. I think all time, they're, uh, the Yotes are 17 4 here versus the Leafs. Seven and three the last ten. I know that for sure. Uh, I I just have to do it too. I have to be on the Oats here. I'm going to take the over as well. Just saying. I just one thing. The Oats have given up goals, um, and I still think that can happen. I know the people that like Matthews. I don't blame you, especially if you got that number like Rocco did somewhere in the 120s. It's kind of a steal because I think it just keeps going up and up and up. Uh, coming back home where he's from here in Arizona. Uh, He's been so efficient, too. He's just been going crazy uh, as of late. But, yeah, give me the Yotes. It's just ugly. I have to do it. I, I just, I've seen this too many times with the Leafs. So I'm with you. Yeah. 
I, I'm there too. Uh, but you also, so we can get you a plus 166 on the money line. You also want the over six and a half. I think that I'm going to, uh, at this point, and I, I hesitate to double up on it, but me I'm gonna too. Be, I'm going to be interested but, in what the team total over for the Coyotes is. Uh, if I could put a three together at plus money, uh, I, I'm, I'm going to look into that as well. But let's give you the uh, six and a half here. And let's find out. So the best, uh, the lowest uh, juice is the minus one. Oh, it doesn't say it's the lowest. Minus 118 I have. Yeah, minus 118. Did that just change? Let me just click on it. No, minus 118. So over six and a half, yeah. minus 118 here for CMAC. And then I am going to be moving on the Yotes and and the team total over. Uh, so that's the spot. There you go. Anything you want to add to that before we move on to the next spot? That's Coyote's money line in the over six and a half for you, CMAC. That is it. Let's get it. I uh, I can't wait to watch this hockey game. Yeah, it's uh, God, these uh, oh, geez. Uh, 10 p.m. Eastern next up for us. The final game on the NHL board before we get into college basketball. We have C-Mac, Dabby Cab, and Mikey Money coming uh, one after another, giving us their best bets on today's card. And here we go. Slatsy says, useless trend of the day. Ducks 9-1 and one last 10 versus the Jackets. Last 10, uh, four games have gone to overtime. Rocco Rogers on the Ducks team told over three. Let's talk about 10 p.m. Eastern Columbus Blue Jackets, 17, 26, and 10, 8, 12, and 6 on the road to Anaheim Ducks, 20, 33, and 2, 8, 18, and 1 at home, Honda Center in Anaheim, California. These, you know, I used to be fine in first period bets. I don't know why I'm freaking out now. I guess, you know, with the unit size going up a little bit incrementally uh, on the 1st of January, you know, the, the, the importance has, you know, heightened for me to succeed, but... Good God, the being on the under one and a half in the Avalanche Canucks game was torture. Being on the Predators uh, first, sorry, not the uh, the uh, Blue Jackets first period against the Kings, uh, you know, was absolute torture. And of course, the Kings score with a minute left to, to screw me. And this is a horrific travel situation for Anaheim, just like it was a horrific travel situation for the Kings. I think the Kings are going to be a huge problem in the playoffs. Now, I know that they've had this horrific run and it cost McClellan his job, but they're big and they're going to be tough to play every second night. So they were able to you know, step up here and beat the Jackets 5-1. Are the Ducks able to here? Are the Ducks able to? So Daniil Tarasov has been bad. 3.91 goals against average, 877 save percentage. John Gibson's coming off. The best game he's had all year. Is he going to be able to do that again? You have McGinn and Zegers out for the Ducks. You have Fantilli and Line out for the Jackets. I want the Jackets here, but I did want to talk it out before I moved on it. This total sitting at six and a half. It's minus 116 to the over. Open at minus 118 to the over. It's minus 116 to the over. From a money line standpoint here, oh, God, just a huge Jesus. You're not even getting plus money on the Jackets anymore? Oh, God. Yeah. So this opened up at 7.30 in the morning at plus 113. I can't remember what I was being offered at. Was it? I even think it might even be like a plus 120. I, I can't remember what I was being offered at 365. Clearly, I should have moved on it. We have a huge move to the Blue Jackets. 13 cents of movement. Uh, I agree with the move. I just don't know if I want first, if I'd rather have just first period. Although that certainly didn't work. Uh, last night, but it wouldn't have worked full game anyways. Columbus on the second half, back-to-back. -back. Uh, Ducks finished off that 2-2 two and two road trip with a 4-3 win at Buffalo on Monday night. Again, we talked about it. They were outshot 37-14. So that was on, on Monday night. So yesterday, so they went home to their mm -hmm. hotel and they slept. Then they fly from Buffalo back to L.A., deal with whatever they have to deal with. Now they come back here and play against an angry Blue Jackets team that's already cost their general manager, whom I have despised the moves he's made. So I want the jackets. Oh, it's plus one fifteen. Rich H saying, uh, "I want the jackets." Uh, should I? Is it a mistake that I didn't move earlier? Yes, but it it wasn't an easy bet to make. So I just wanted to talk it out with you guys. Do I want the jackets first period or full game? There's no chance I'm doubling up. Take it away. And turns Z saying jackets puck line. Take it away for us here. Cmac, Tarasov, Gibson, jackets, Ducks. Final game on the board in NHL. I think you hit it. That was a little bit. Maybe you just kind of missed it, you know, not getting the plus money. So it's just tough. But this is a horrible spot here for the Ducks. Um, 
you know, on that four game trip to two wins and two horrible losses, just kind of, yeah, yeah, horrible. Yeah. yeah. Just killed. And then they come back here. Like, I don't know I, when I look at this real quick on the total, I haven't bet it, but, and it hasn't moved, which is weird. I could only be on the over. I just don't know if I make a bet here on this with these two teams, obviously. Uh, and the Jackets, I think they get some more goals. Obviously, they're on the back-to-back -back after last night, last night's loss to the Kings. But I think they're live. I think they're live first period. That's where I would look, you know, Jimmy. Uh, just in case full game, uh, Ducks kind of wake up uh, and get going. So in the end, I stayed off. You know, I kind of missed this. I don't, And I don't want my money really here on the Jackets. I just, in the end, two bad hockey teams. I just can't take it. Two goalies that aren't great. Um, so I passed, but I still think they're, this could get over here. Just how bad these teams are defensively. I'm going to take the first period. <clears throat> okay. I'm going to take the first period uh, instead of the full game. It took me a little while to get there. So I will be on the blue jackets first period here. Uh, so let's review all NHL action here. Uh, C-Mac had one bet on the show Thursday or excuse me, on the show Wednesday, he cashed the Jets Sharks under five and a half, and he gets his card started with the under six and a half in Bruins Oilers. I really like it. I really like it. Uh, obviously, you know, your concern, concern with the Oilers is, you know, obviously it's a 3-2 situation, two and a yeah. half minutes left, goalies pulled, Oilers make it 4-2. Uh, with the empty netter within 20 seconds, and then the Bruins keep their goalie out, and it's 5 2, and you, you smash something. But that's just. That's just, uh, yeah. Yeah. Uh, I, I'm very interested in joining you on the under six and a half. There's only one way the Bruins can play the Oilers. I think I will. In fact, I almost kind of like the. I almost kind of like that first period under better. But if it is 2 0 Oilers, and, you know, it's, I kind of. Uh, but I, I'll figure it out. I'll figure that out on my own bullshit. Uh, I'm on the Oilers minus one and plus 119. Uh, C-Max on the Coyotes plus 166 and the over six and a half in Toronto, Arizona. I'm going to be on the Coyotes and the Coyotes team total over. Then I'll be on the Blue Jackets first period in that, my friends, is our NHL breakdown for Wednesday, February 21st. Okay, there's our guy, Dutch Boy, fresh in the house. He will be joining us on Friday. But... But Dutch has been hammering college basketball. And don't forget, we'll talk about it when Dabby Cab's on here, that we have our All About the Hoops Wednesday night basketball live stream this evening. And there's going to be a ton of action here. And then Dutch going to be joining us on Friday because uh, he couldn't make it here today. Uh, Dominic Mero says, I like the Ducks. Oh, but you guys talked me off of it. Yeah, it's, it's a horrific travel spot in NHL and NBA. You get a team flying back across the continent west with only one day off in between in the nba it's a slam dunk these teams do nothing and like, i mean nothing it's a little different in the nhl okay let's go we move on to college basketball here is a five and four day uh plus 0 0.56 units and look i don't know if it's worth the time it took off in my life I'm just so stressed out watching all these games. Uh, any day in the black is a good day. Let's stack winning days. But good God, uh, that was a not an easy uh, way to make money. We have Morgan Spooner giving us Oklahoma State plus 10, UNLV minus 6, Jacksonville State minus 6, and New Mexico minus 6.5. Kent, uh, Kent Davies has the Western uh, Carolina – UMVG under 139 and a half. Uh, Wine Time Sports, Penn State plus eight. Xavier minus five. Dayton minus two and a half. Air Force plus six. The first game from all three of our cappers will be Illinois, Penn State. So prepare uh, to hear that three times here. All right. Uh, let's roll. Much love, Jared TG. Let's get to work. We start at 6.30 p.m. Eastern. And the number 12 ranked Illinois fighting Illini, 19 and 6, 10 and 4, 10 and 4 in the Big Ten at the Penn State Nittany Lions. Uh, Nittany Lions are 12 and 14, 6 and 9 in conference. Let's get this all set up here to discuss. Game one on the card. Again, you'll hear it three times. Uh, 
the Illini bounced back from that loss at Michigan State. They lost 88-80 11 days ago. Bounced back. They started it with that home win over Michigan. They destroyed Michigan, 97-68. Then they went to Maryland and beat them, 85-80. It's not I know Maryland's not good, but not easy to beat the Terps at home. So that was on Saturday, the 85-80 victory. Penn State in the throes of three straight losses. They lose at Northwestern, 68-63. Then at home, they lose to Michigan State, 80-72. And then they follow it up with a debacle. Now, we've backed Nebraska at home often. But here at Nebraska, 68-49 on Saturday. 49 points they scored. Uh, they shot 33.3% from the field and 21.7% from three. And to make matters worse, they were completely out-rebounded. Uh, they were out-rebounded 42-31. to 31. It was a debacle. 22 points in the first half, 27 points in the second half. They looked horrible. Uh, Ron Crawford's spreadsheet play of the day is in. And... Uh, for hockey and for college basketball. It's the Flyers and the hockey in Miami. Hurricanes, Tone Miggins, Drake team, total over 40 and a half and minus 109, two and a half unit play for our guy Tone. So let me copy and paste that. All right, let's get into the line history of the situation. Is this a Penn State bounce back spot here at home after the debacle in Nebraska? Here we go. Uh, Illinois, Penn State. Uh, we're going to use bet online uh, market moves. Again, we have our bet online uh, link on our website. If you're looking for a new account, so new accounts only, 100% bonus up to $1,000. And every other site that has one uh, is Bitcoin only. Ours isn't. So you can put cash in. So this opened up yeah. with Penn State plus seven and a half. Uh, within 30 minutes, they moved to eight. And then 30 minutes after that, they moved down to seven. Right now, they're right back where they started, plus seven and a half, although there has been 10 cents of movement towards them. From a cash flow, oh, shoot, sorry, from a cash flow standpoint, God, sorry, I messed that up. Let's get this up here. We have this opening up at 157 and a half, uh, obviously extremely high total. Opening up at 157 and a half, and it's dropped to 156 and a half. It is heavily juiced to the under. Uh, there are 156s and 155 and a halves out there. Uh, BJ's got his best bet coming in, Kentucky minus four and a half. Great job. Uh, Dabby Cab also got that at four and a half, and you'll hear him talking about that spot as well. Uh, let's get into the cash flow here for our first game on the board. I won't need to go through this when the other cappers talk about this spot, Illinois, Penn State, but it's 50-50 with 59% of the cash on Penn State. So some bigger bets are coming in on Penn State. Uh, it's still 7.5, but 10 cents of juice in their direction. And from a total standpoint, 61% of tickets and 56% cash on the over. Take it away for us here, CMAC, our first game on the board, Big Ten action in University Park, Pennsylvania. Let's hit on that the total. I'm not on that here, but I lean over. Uh, as DC Capper just put it in the chat, uh, I didn't bet that, but there should be points in this game. Yeah, Illinois, you know, just been really good since Shannon's been back. Uh, and they've been really good on the road. I'm sure you'll hear Cab come on here and, and talk about that. They're just a good basketball team. This Penn State team, I had them on the Super Bowl plus eight. They covered. I wanted nothing to do with them. They lose to Michigan State like you talked about. And Nebraska at home has just been a wagon. Uh, I'd like to be on Indiana today. I didn't get to that game, but I just couldn't get there in the end because I think Nebraska is a little bit of a fade on the road. But Penn State, this is a key for me. I, I, we have to make this bet. I'm here, Jimmy. I'd really like, you know, and obviously the line is with him probably out is uh, Kanye Clary, whether he's going to play or not here for Penn State. He's been out for a while, one of their better guards. Um and look, it showed up in the box score, it scored 49 points. So I'd like for him to be home after those three losses. I just have to take him full game here, plus the eight. Uh, it's been a good matchup for them over the last few years here over Illinois. So especially if he gets ruled in, I'd really love it. But I think they can hang in this game. Uh, give me Penn State. Penn State. I mean, there's only one way I'm looking at this game. And Mike Wilkerson says Illinois covering, but – it's being hugely successful expecting the home bounce back after a debacle. It's just huge. You know, it's just, it's just three straight working. losses. It's just working. Yeah. You know, very first half, you know, you could look after 49 points. Well, 
the Illinois has been great though. I mean, I'm sure Cavs talk about it. I'm sure he's on Illinois if he's on this game. The issue here, you know, is, is it's right at that number where I kind of like going first half. Yeah. The the bigger problem here is, and I'm trying to stay away from these spots. I don't feel like the market has tipped their hand. Now you could say, look, I expect Penn State to bounce back. We're getting a lot of points here for a home team, you know, all that stuff, and that's all like so legitimate. Uh, and even Pinnacle's got this, you know, pretty heavily juiced. This is going to seven. Uh, do you have an eight on your? And Bavada has moved it to seven. Do you have an eight on the your books there in Vegas? Because I can't get you anything better than yeah. Seven. I mean, there was, but that was thirty minutes ago or so. Why don't you take a look and see if you can get one? Because right now, the best I can give you is plus seven and a half at minus 108. They're gone. God damn. Yeah, seven and a half. Jimmy, just give me uh, the lowest juice. A plus. Okay, so we have Stimmy OG move big on Penn State as well. So Penn State plus seven and a half uh, at minus 108 for CMAC. No, nah, Mikey. I'm just saying he's going to give you the other side, which I – Illinois is a great basketball team. They've been great on the road, um, you know. And I need, I really want Clary in. This is just – this is what we to deal with, you know, doing the show. So No doubt. Saturated says, no faith in my Illini. <laughs> I just – I can understand why people think it's a bounce back spot for the home team. But let's roll on. We stay with 6.30 p.m. Eastern action, and we head to the A-10. St. Bonaventure, Bonnie, 16-9, and 7-6 and six in conference. At the LaSalle Explorers, 12-14, and 3-10 and 10 in conference. We're at Tom Gola Arena in Philadelphia, Pennsylvania. Take a look at the line history. We'll start with the spread. LaSalle sitting here at plus 6. This opened up at plus 7, and then it went down to plus 5.5 last night. And that 5.5 was also juiced towards LaSalle it's come back to six but it's a you know an a legit one point move towards them you know when I talk about seeing it like an edge just with the number you know that the number at seven you could tell the market is telling you that there was an edge at that number for the home dog uh, Wisconsin had 70 percent of the cash on them yesterday and it wasn't moving off of that seven. It wasn't even really getting one book. Pinnacle had them juiced, but the other books didn't. Uh, that's something I'm trying. It's also kind of getting my quantity of action down a little bit when I just kind of stay off those spots. But I get why Penn State is a look. And I see now that at seven, the market thought there was an advantage with LaSalle. Now you have to ask yourself, is there that same advantage at six? From a total standpoint, this opened up at 145 and a half. Uh, that is exactly where it is right now, uh, 145 and a half. Uh, cash flow wise here for this one, again, another 630 start. We have 38% of tickets and 73% of the cash on the under. A lot of money on the under in this one. Then we have 70% of the tickets and 77% of the cash on LaSalle. So uh, this is also, you know, a, a public spot the explorers at this point but at least the market has reacted the bonnies have won two straight and three of four uh they're coming off the 81 80 overtime victory at home over davidson that came on the heels of beating up on fordham at fordham by 18 then we have lasalle finally snapping their losing streak uh, they lost at Davidson 71 56. So they, they were losing by double digits to, you know, St. Louis, who we know the Billikens are weak. They lost at Richmond by 17. Uh, they lost at Davidson by 15. And then they came back home and beat a really good UMass squad 82 uh, 81. An impressive performance. Maybe a really good is a, a little much, but, you know, eight and six in conference and 17 nine overall UMass. Take it away for us here, C Mac, your second game on the board, the Bonnies at the Explorers. Yeah, I, uh, I think the Bonnies here could come in and get a win. And I just wish I could trust LaSalle a little bit more. And one reason I can't hear is their defense, uh, Jimmy. They just don't stop anything here. And they're one of the more up tempo teams you know, in the country. And the flip side, though, the Bonnies aren't. But as of late, they've been playing faster. And when they get together with a team like LaSalle, uh, obviously they can score a ton of points. And I think they get 75-80 easy here. And I think LaSalle can get theirs as well. Because St. Bonaventure just hasn't been the same team on the road defensively as they've been at home. 
you know, both teams shoot the ball well. Say Bonaventure shoots it well from three, 37%, 77% from the free throw line. And LaSalle, other how bad defensively they are, can make shots. I'm sure you've, I don't know if you've seen the play a little bit. Jimmy uh, can make some shots, just horrible defensively. Uh, this, this line hasn't moved, you know, on the total to the under. I'm the other way here. Give me the over uh, at this number. Let's line shop for you on the over. We have 145 and a half at minus 110 is the best line available here. Uh, let me know if you can uh, beat that, but for now. Yeah, just a 140. I got a 145 here. 145 flat? Minus 110, yeah. Okay, perfect. Circa. Over 145 minus 110 for CMAC. Let's roll on. Let's roll on. Let me get this uh, set up here. And let's go. Next up for us is Sunbelt Action. Uh, 7 p.m. Eastern, Coastal Carolina, Chanticleer is 8 and 17, 5 and 9 in the Sun Belt at the Georgia State Panthers, 12 and 14, 6 and 8 in conference play. We're in the Convocation Center in Atlanta, Georgia. Let me get this up here. Take a second. Uh, here we go. Okay. Georgia State at home here. Uh, we have Georgia State winners of three of their last four. Uh, you know, they went to James Madison and lost. That's their lone loss over the last four games. They lost by 20. We know what James Madison is capable of and what they can do, uh, especially at home. And they came back and beat Old Dominion, 68-65 on the road. Uh, Coastal Carolina coming off two straight victories, but they're at home. If we look at what they've done on the road, it is pretty horrific. Uh, they lose by 38 at James Madison. They lose by 17 at Marshall. And they lose by four at Louisiana Monroe. Uh, Louisiana Monroe, uh, you know, five and nine in conference. Now, maybe you could say Georgia State going into ODU is nothing. You know, ODU is last in the conference, two and 12 in conference play. But now Georgia State coming home and the Chanticleers after two wins beating Georgia Southern 82-75 at home following that up on Saturday with a win over Marshall by seven are going back out onto the road. Let's take a look at the line history here for this one. Oh man sorry too many games here and it's taking me too long and I'm gonna lose it just try to stay calm and you will find the game if you stay calm. <laughs> so annoying here. Uh, okay, taking me too long to find the game. And ah, damn, I apologize. Why can I not find coastal? Oh, there we go. Sorry, this total is sitting at 153. I uh, opened up at 151 and a half. This got all the way up to 155. Got up to 155, which was deemed, you know, too high. From a spread perspective, we are sitting here with. Coastal Carolina as nine point dogs plus nine. They opened up as 10 point dogs. So there's been a one point move towards Coastal Carolina. And then in the cash flow scenario here, we have 34% of the tickets and 70% of the cash is on Georgia State. Big bets are coming on Georgia State, and yet it's gone from 10 to nine. Uh, that doesn't, you know, breed confidence. And then 60% of tickets and 79% of cash is on the over. And we saw it go all the way up to 155 before that was deemed too high. Take it away for us here, C-Mac. Your next spot on the board, Sun Belt, Fun Belt, Coastal Carolina, Georgia State. Yeah, these teams, this was the weight for me, Jimmy. And I don't like what I, you know, what I've seen because I've lost a little bit of the value here because uh, I wanted it at 155, 154 and a half to me. This number just got too, too high. I just, there's a volatility with these teams. That's why it was a wait and see for me, but I still got to be on the under. We're on it. Uh, I'm on this game. Both teams are bad at scoring here. Just ugly basketball. Now they do get up and down. Uh, they're sloppy. They turn the ball over in, in this game. Georgia State too, as of late, they're just, and you know, all season, they've been better defensively, this team. Um, and it's shown. I think they've had four or five straight unders and even lower to this. This, to me, when it hit 155, Jimmy, my number was like 151. So I saw four points of value. Uh, that's why it was a wait for me. But now we're down to 153. I'll still make it a play here. I think their defense is too good. You can even look at Coastal's team total under. I wanted to glance at that. 
but uh, just give me the full game here right now. Wow, and it's just moving down quickly. Um, a lot of books have moved it to 152. We can still get either 153 minus 110, but uh, if anybody wants to roll with CMAC on this, uh, get in now. It's uh, This one is dropping. And get the 153s if you can. This one's dropping. Uh, pull one up. I've copied and pasted your notes here when we get to the Kentucky game. It's great stuff. I I've loved your insights the last few days. You've been rocking with us, so respect the pull one up. Uh, C-Mac on the under 153 in Coastal Carolina, Georgia State. Coastal Carolina, Georgia State. All right, let's roll on. Next up for us is a spot that C-Mac – Want is waiting for a number on, and it's crucial for everyone to, to hear these spots. Also, uh, and, and I don't want this to get in CMAC's head, but part of the reason why I still wanted to talk about the game was these he's had two spots in the last month where he said, the, the, I'm waiting for this number and I'm not getting it. And I decided to still move on it, and I've cashed both of them. Uh, so not only do I respect that he's waiting for a number, but I also respect the cap and want to hear it. So let's get to work here. Uh, we head to the Patriot League. Bucknell, Bison, 10 and 17, 7 and 7 in conference. At Holy Cross, Crusaders, 8 and 19, 5 and 9 in conference. We're at the Heart Center in Worcester, Massachusetts. Let's take a look at the situation. Bucknell, losers of three straight. Lost to Boston. Uh, at home, 77-62. A loss to Lehigh Valley, 71-63 in overtime. And then lost at Colgate on Saturday, 62-50. to Holy Cross has lost three of four. Their loss, last two losses, they also went to Colgate and lost. They lost by 30. And then they came home and played Army, losing 59-53. to uh, You know, Army is 6-8 in conference. Bucknell, 7-7. Seven and seven. So that is the situation here. Uh, if we look at, you know, if we try to just narrow down what Bucknell has been doing on the road, you know, they lost to Colgate 62-50. Before that, uh, they beat Navy 80-67. to They lost in overtime at American University. They beat Army. They lost in overtime to Lafayette. They beat Boston. So they, they've been able to, they've been okay, uh, you know, on the road. The road hasn't been a horrific situation for them. Let's get into the line history here first off on the spread uh, this opened up with holy cross plus four uh holy cross within nine uh, sorry 21 minutes at pinnacle moved to three and a half and then this morning moved to two and a half at 9 22 a.m moved to 22 and a half from a total side of things here oh sorry let me get back to uh bet online over here uh we're sitting with a 136 it is juice to the over this opened up at 135 and dropped down to 134 and before it climbed to 136. And it's also juiced to the over uh, at 136. So let's grab the cash flow here for this spot. I'll try to at least. And here we go. 35% of the tickets and 69% of the cash is on the over. And then 65% of the tickets and 91% of the cash is on Holy Cross to deliver at home. Holy Cross to deliver at home. Interesting. Take it away for us here, CMAC, a Patriot League. Talk to us about, uh, you know, why you're waiting for the number and your thoughts on the, the cap. Well, I'm waiting on it. I don't think I get it. <laughs> Let's just be uh, real here. I don't think I get this number. So to me, it's it, I just stay off. Or I might have a small play if I can get there, but I, there's things with Holy Cross and why I didn't get there. Well, I just I just wanted three and a half, four. I've had this team a couple times during the year. I've had a couple wins, a couple losses. Back January 27th, they were winning that game, or basically down by one the whole way, and lost by six to Lehigh, and they were four point dogs. Uh, I've just seen them. They're bad at the free throw line. They make bad mistakes. They haven't been great at home. Now they've lost three of four. Uh, they just lost to Army at home. Looking at the total, I'd lean under the way they've been scoring. Both these teams aren't great. But I don't really trust Bucknell. This is a revenge spot, too, here Jimmy, for Holy Cross, why I liked it. Uh, Bucknell beat him, what was it, January 6th I had on here? I believe January 3rd, 70-58 at home. So I just think we get a little bit of revenge here with Holy Cross. Tough to trust. I just wanted that. You know, three and a half, four to feel safe. But still, to me, uh, it's Holy Cross or nothing here. And Bucknell off three straight losses as well. Here. 
Yeah, they're you know uh, the problem here with this at this point for me is Bucknell's been fine on the road, you know, mm-hmm. they're coming into yeah, right. losses. I I the market is saying that Holy Cross is the bet. Yeah. You know, clearly. But I can't correlate it enough with yeah, and they're the not the good, this, and they're at home, which is good too. Another thing was they're not Bucknell's the better defensive team. Holy Cross is just not very good defensively. And Davey said they suck. Yeah, it's horrible. Yeah. All right. Well, let's roll on. Let's. I had a few on. of those spots, Jimmy, which was tough last night. I wanted more in some of these games. I just couldn't get there with like you know like four or five of these with the number. Yeah, it's important to, to wait for the number. Uh, and there's lots of opportunities here on the board. So let's roll along. We'll head over to the MVC Missouri Valley Conference here. Next up for us, 8 p.m. Eastern, the Bradley Braves, 18 and 9, 10 and 6 in conference at Missouri State Bears, 15 and 12, 7 and 9 in conference or at Great Southern Bank Arena in Springfield, Missouri. Uh, Bradley has lost three of four. Uh, three of four on Sunday. So they just played on Sunday. So two days off in between games, uh, they lose 74 63 at Northern Iowa. They were three and a half point favorites and they got destroyed right off the tip. 44 uh, 26 at halftime. They looked uh, bad. Uh, probably an angry group. Uh, Missouri state uh, snapped their three game losing streak. You know, they came home uh, losers of three straight and took out Valparaiso, took out the Beacons 82 to 74. They shot 56.4% from the field, and they were 12 and a half point favorites. They didn't cover, uh, but they got the victory. So that's the situation here. Uh, you know, an angry Bradley team, losers of three of four, but on the road. And they haven't been great on the road this year, but they did beat Illinois State on the road. Let's take a look at the line history then for this one. This one's popping off at 8 p.m. Eastern. So. We have get over to this spot. Here we go. We have Bradley right now sitting as four point favorites, sitting at minus four. They opened up at minus two and a half. That's a point and a half move uh, to the road favorite. From a total side of things, here we have it sitting at 142 and a half. This opened up at 143. It went all the way down to 141 before there was buyback and then cash flow uh, here. Let's grab the cash flow for this spot. 79% of the tickets and 87% of the cash is on Bradley. Ton of action on Bradley. 78% of tickets, 92% of cash on the under. Uh, some cappers I want to shout out. We got Guillermo Zertucci in the house. Also, JT back in business. Uh, great to see you. Uh, sorry, TJ. Jesus, what's wrong with me? TJ back in business. Says time to talk MLB futures. You will be seeing TJ here on our channel come baseball season. And we're excited to have him be a big part of our baseball coverage. A diehard MMA podcast in the house giving us his UFC Mexico action. Thank you, uh, Clint, my man. Let's go into this spot here. Take it away for us, C-Mac, your second-to-last game on the board, Bradley, Missouri State. Yeah, I I get the loss here with Bradley, but I don't think they should be four-point favorites here on the road. I've had my troubles in the past with Missouri State, and uh, even this year they let me down at home. But consistently at home they've been very good. And it's tough to just be – they're one of these teams, Jimmy, that was just like there's they don't do much – great <laughs> you know they're just it's you're kind of going off uh they're at home before that they had three straight losses the valpo obviously valpo not very good but still their team uh, that could cover numbers so look out to, at valpo but i love it here getting four points at home i don't trust bradley at all i think they're a little bit of paper here you know 18 and 9 uh you know and they've lost three of four and they struggled. They've really relied on the three, which they've been very good at. But when it doesn't fall, it's not great. They don't get to the free throw line. They only get there 11 times uh, a game. So, And I think in the end, especially at home, the defense ratchets up for Missouri State here. And I want the four points in my back pocket. I think they went out right. But give me the four here with Missouri State. You got it. Uh, Robert saying it's uh, minus two and a half over there at ProLine uh, Plus, but it's minus four right across the board uh, on the offshores at every single book. So 
Uh, we'll see if all this money's on Bradley. I don't think it hits four and a half. No way. I think we start seeing it even come down right now. Yeah, I. That's just know, what I. Do. These very public favorites, you know, weren't very good last night, and now you have a very public road favorite. Even though the market's moving in their direction, I don't know why. You know. Well, this is one year, Jimmy. Like where I want the dog, which normally I want. Like. It's tricky. I want Richmond. Somebody already put it in the chat. Like that just seems like a slam dunk for them to go to Rhode Island and win minus four. But you know, I just hadn't bet it yet. But that was one, uh, and that hasn't moved. That's actually come down. I think it opened right around four and a half. It's just stuck there. So, yeah, interesting. Uh, you know, ways to go here with these numbers. Plus four at minus 108. Uh, Lamont Williams coming in uh, with his max bet. I uh, love to see it. It is New Mexico. Uh, New Mexico with the points here. That is a game that will. That's our final game on today's show. Exactly. Nick. <laughs> Colorado State, New Mexico. So that's locked in. I love it. Okay. Uh, so then CMAC moving on Missouri State. Deacon Mike's. Missouri State Bears plus four yep. minus one oh eight. Let's get into the final spot on the board here for CMAC. 8 p.m. Eastern. We have the Charlotte 49ers, 17 and 8, 11 and 2 in the American at the Memphis Tigers, 18 and 8, 7 and 6 in the American. We're at FedEx Forum in Memphis, Tennessee here. Charlotte's won three straight, uh, four or five. I mean, you know, 11 and 2 in the conference, just behind South Florida. Uh, and Memphis has been bad, uh, bad losers of two straight on the road, uh, you know, at home, we go back to their home cover. I mean, they beat Tulane by 12. Uh, they just barely got past Wichita by two. Uh, you know, we had Temple, uh, My Mikey Money gave out Temple at plus seven. That was a push, I believe, uh, in that spot uh, back on, on, on the eighth. I believe that was a push if I remember my memory is right. But uh, Charlotte coming up three straight wins. They win at Temple 73-70, go home and beat UTSA by nine, and follow that up with a nine-point win over Wichita. Both teams played on Sunday. Let's get into the line history here for this one. Start with the total sitting at 146. This opened up at 145. It's now 146, so we've gone up one point. And then with the spread here, we have it uh, sitting at five and a half. We'll go over to to Bet Online. Uh, Bet Online has this at five and a half, juice towards Memphis minus five and a half, minus one fifteen. It's opened up at six, so we have a half point move towards Charlotte. And then when we get to the cash flow here, from the total, sixty one percent of tickets and eighty nine percent of cash on the under and on the spread, we have. 38% of the tickets on Memphis and 48% of the cash. Memphis is such a difficult team to back, especially when it comes down to crunch time. Their foul shooting is horrific. Mm -hmm. But the market, uh, I don't know, half point move towards Charlotte. Take it away for us here, C-Mac. Maybe you can shine some light on the spot. FedEx Forum in Memphis. This is one of these spots, the more, because it's kind of the ones when you look at, Jimmy, that just jumps out to you. And it always, like, you need to go back and kind of look through more and more because it just seems uh, Charlotte. And that's where I want to be. I, cause I've seen enough of this team, uh, and I've seen enough of Memphis to just them laying points can't be backed at all. Not the way they play defensively, the turnovers, the free throw shooting. They just not have, you know, they haven't been good at all. Uh, Jones has been all right. Quinterly just hasn't been very good this year at all. Uh, Charlotte here, better team defensively. And I've seen it, whether it's, you know, the close loss at South Florida, the wins over UAB, North Texas, uh, Temple. So I love this basketball team. They're gritty, and I think they stay in this game. And in the end, it's too many. Give me the five and a half here for Charlotte. Let's get you that five and a half. I wish we could still get a six. Uh, I like their starting five, you know, the players that they have, you know, Graves, Jackson. These guys, they're good. That Milicic, the big guy. Uh, let me show it. I'm just going to quickly uh, see how much it would cost for the six because uh, it might might be able to get it for minus 112 or minus 113. would be nice to get the I'll six in a close game. Uh, minus 114 for plus six. A minus 105 for plus five and a half. Which would you prefer? Maybe five and a half. All right. 
Locked in Charlotte. Charlotte plus five and a half and minus 105. Let's review C Max action in college basketball. He gets it started with Penn State plus seven and a half at minus 108. Stimmy OG big on Penn State at plus eight. He's on the over 145 in St. Bonaventure LaSalle. He's on the under 153 in Coastal Carolina, Georgia State. Uh, State off Bucknell, Holy Cross. Uh, but it was a fun cap and fun to talk about. Uh, Missouri State plus four, uh, public on Bradley, a very public road favorite. And the lines moved towards Bradley, two and a half to four. I uh, see Matt going right up against that with Missouri State plus four, and then Charlotte plus five at minus 105. I uh, see Five and a half. Five and a half. Oh, yeah. Sorry. I have it plus five and a half. That's my bad. Plus five and a half, minus 105. Okay. Uh, excellent work, C Mac. Uh, thank you for rocking with us. You can catch C Mac here every Wednesday on Betting with the Bag. And of course, every Saturday, uh, right after the Jeff Nadu College Basketball Show, we have our live, live uh, bet cast uh, for the uh, you know highlighted college basketball game. So check that out every Saturday morning at 11 45 a.m. Eastern. C Mac, my man, thank you for rocking with us. Uh, any last words for the Capper supporting the show? Yeah, shout out to everyone. Yeah, join us Saturdays. Uh, I love the show, Cab. I think it, it keeps growing and growing and growing too. Uh, join us as college basketball is heating up. Uh, we're almost there to uh, bracket time. But all you guys, TJ, appreciate it. Robert, Ian, Coin, Kent Davies, Brian Watson, Poe One Up, <laughs> my man Joey. Shout out to all you guys, EQ. Thanks for having me, Jimmy. Now it's cash, man. MMA, Clint. Great to see you, my dude, in your ear. Appreciate you. Let's get paid. Let's get that cash. There he is, Connor Mack, coming to us live from Las Vegas. We go from Las Vegas to Dallas, Texas, for our next guest. You can run with both of these cats down in San Antonio for Pubba Palooza. They will both be there rocking with us. But without further ado, let me also mention that that loss he had on Thursday stopped a six-game winning streak on our show six game winning streak your next guest is hitting at 59 percent on our show he's a roi plus 14.41 percent uh leading by example 36 and 25 plus 8.79 units please welcome from dallas texas the magic man dabra kadabra now it's dabby how are you my man jimmy i'm good man i'm good you know how it is. I love this college basketball, man. And I've been chomping, champ, champing, chomping, whatever the fuck it is. I've been ready to get get after it today. I like today's card. Uh, I knew we'd have a little bit of different opinions today, but uh, that's what makes this fun, man. And I plan on winning, so I don't really care what anybody's opinion is. <laughs> hey, man, I like it. And you've been winning uh, six in a row before the loss on Memphis first half last Thursday. Let's get right to it, Debbie Cap, because you start the same way. Each capper is starting here with the Illinois fighting Illini at Penn State Nittany Lions. Big question is, are the Nittany Lions going to bounce back off the debacle in Nebraska? 49 points they scored against the Huskers. Uh, Penn State plus 7.5 is on C-Max card. What is on Dabby Cab's card? Take it away. The Bryce Jordan Center at 6.30 p.m. Eastern. Floor is yours. So it's not my favorite thing to start with um, a bet like this, but it, it's where we are, and it's a bet that I'm making, Okay. I think C-Mac could be on to something. Penn State might cover full game here. Uh, on Monday, on Medicaid Monday, I said the same thing about Iowa State versus Houston, but I was able to cash the bet that I make, okay? So what I'm going to do with this game, and I'll talk about it first, but I'm going to go first half on the money line with Illinois. I'll just let you know right now, this is one of those. I'm only taking the money line. I'm not worried about a spread. Um, you know, I think I think Illinois is going to continue to shine right now. They've won five of their last six games. You know, they've got road wins in those six games over Ohio State over Maryland, um, and Penn State's just struggling right now. They've dropped three state straight games. You guys are talking about it, so I understand looking at the bounce back here at home. Uh, but this Illinois team is one of the best offensive squads in the entire country. Right now they're putting up 123.5 points per 100 possessions, which is fifth in D1. Um, I mean, that's outstanding. That's, that's, that's crazy production right there. And you look on the flip side, uh, Penn State putting up 111.2 per 100 possessions, um, Illinois has got the better defensive squad. You know, they're conceding 3.3 fewer points per hundred possessions than the lions. Um, and another thing Illinois has been doing is they've been winning by big margins, you know, um, five of their last seven wins have incurred by at least eight points. So that's why, you know, I, I, I didn't want to hop on Penn state full game. I do. I, 
if I if I had to make a full game bet, it would probably be Penn State on the spread. Um, but I like my bet. I'm going to take Illinois in the first half on the money line. And uh, I sent you Alabama, Florida. Jimmy, I'm going to actually have to shift here. I'm going to put the Clemson, Georgia Tech up. I'm very sorry about that. I'd still love to talk Alabama game if you want to, though. But uh, I, I'm, I'm going to use Clemson, Georgia Tech as the second part of this bet. Okay, well, why don't we discuss Florida, Alabama uh, first, and that will give Jose time to set up uh, the Clemson game. So, uh, Jose, we'll do we'll stick to the schedule of Florida, Alabama uh, next, but then we will go Clemson uh, at Georgia Tech right after this one, Jose. I feel like it's so gross, Jimmy, when I give out these first half parlays, but there's something I've been betting since way before you guys ever saw me on screen. I don't know what it is. It's just a bet that I like. And I tell you what, I think I'm like eight. No on those this year when I've given them out on shows. <laughs> yeah. I thought, I thought it was five and one, uh, but maybe it, is, uh, maybe it is. I don't know. It, it's it's been very, and that's not here. You're undefeated. The loss was when you gave out, I'm not sure what show it was, but uh, well, I gave one out on on a Medicaid Monday that went um, that one half pushed and then the other half cash. So it was like a point three unit casher, which sucks, but it was you know it's still not a loss. No, I feel you. I feel you. Well, let's touch on this spot here and tell us what you what your plan was and why you have left it. 7 p.m. Eastern, the number 24 ranked Florida Gators, 18 and 7, 8 and 4 in the SEC at the number 13th ranked Alabama Crimson Tide, 18, 7, 10 and 2 in the SEC. Coleman Coliseum and Tuscaloosa. We will see both of these teams in the tourney. Florida's won three straight. They bounced back off that loss at Texas A&M. They won uh, they beat a good Auburn squad, 81-65, just squeaked past LSU, 82-80, and then went into Georgia and beat them, 88-82. Uh, you know, Georgia 4-8 and eight in conference, but uh, still strong. Uh, Alabama lost at Auburn, 99-81. That's the lone blemish on their uh, recent games. Uh, they went into LSU and beat them, 109-92. Uh, they then beat uh, Texas A&M, 100-75. Just a very, very high-octane offense here uh, for them and they haven't played yet this year either. So there's no, uh, there's no Rebenga, there's no uh, anything. First off, the total extremely high. We're dealing with a 174. Uh, this opened up at 175, got it to 166, 176 and a half before it dropped to 174. And then from a spread perspective here, we have an eight and a half. Eight and a half point favorites are. The Alabama Crimson Tide minus eight and a half, minus one fourteen. They opened up at seven and a half, and they're at eight and a half. So we have the one point move in their direction. And then when we get to the cash flow here for this spot, come on. Sorry, I had it set up poorly here. When we have the uh, cash flow for Florida, we have fifty eight percent of tickets and fifty eight percent of cash on Alabama. Lines moved a point in their direction. Then seventy three percent of tickets, seventy six percent cash on the over. Take it away for us here, Tabby Cab. Talk about what your plan was and why you uh, went away from it. Gators, Crimson Tide. Uh, I was going to use Alabama as the second half of that first half parlay with Illinois here. Uh, I was going to use Alabama first half money line. You, look, here's the thing, though. Both of these teams are playing excellent basketball right now. Florida is. Alabama is. You know, I, I respect what the Gators have been doing. Um, and I think that's really the reason it pushed me off here. Both of these teams have been dominant this season. Um, you know, Alabama has been great at home. They're 12 and one straight up. They're 11 and two ATS. Um, and so that's why when I was using Alabama first half, this was another one where full game. I don't know. I kind of I kind of liked Florida. But I'm not going against Alabama at home where they're 11 and 2 ATS and their offense is the best in the country. I mean, they're, I talk about how many uh, points per game uh, Illinois is putting up per 100 possessions. Alabama's putting up 127.4 points per game per 100 possessions. I mean, that's, that's just outstanding. And you look across the side, uh, Florida is still, you know, they're a good offense. They're going to get out on the court and they're going to run up and down the court with Alabama. One thing, uh, if you watched Alabama against AM on Saturday, AM could not keep up with that barrage of threes. They just flat out couldn't do it. I mean, Alabama was just shooting and shooting and hitting their shots. Florida, uh, I think they can. I think they can get out on the court and run with them. Do I think they're as good at, you know, shooting the three as Alabama? Of course not. I don't know if there's, you know, very many teams in the whole country that are. Um, 
my only thing with Florida is their defense. Their their defensive units giving up 101.9 points per 100 possessions. That's 90th in the country. Uh, and you look at what the Tide have done. Alabama's put 100 plus points up in two straight games. Uh, they're still at home right here, so I don't see there's any reason why there's going to be a shortage of scoring from them. Um, and I think if Alabama gets up around that you know threshold of 100 points, you know I think they take it here and, and probably cover. So. I was going to use Alabama first half. I'm not going to do it just because I have respect for Florida. This is me giving Florida respect by staying off this game. All right. Well, let's roll into the game that you switched it for 7 p.m. Eastern. We have Clemson at Georgia Tech. Now, these two teams faced off against each other in a great, great game back on January 16th. Uh, Georgia Tech went into Clemson and won in double overtime, uh, 93 to 90. In that one, Clemson shot 14.3% from the field. So just go right back to San Francisco St. Mary's. We just saw this late last night. The exact same well, not the exact same. It goes in double overtime spot. But St. Mary's went in to San Francisco, beat them easily. And then San Francisco had an answer late in the year. Now, Clemson is the, you know, would be considered the better team, uh, you know, at least record wise uh, in this matchup. Uh, right now, Clemson 7 and 7 in conference, Georgia Tech just 4 and 11. But does Clemson have an answer, especially after that 78 77 loss at home to NC State? That's not Clemson's three game winning streak. That was on Saturday. And Georgia Tech, the opposite. Uh, they were in, in the throes of a losing streak and they snapped out of it by winning uh, at home versus Syracuse. Uh, Syracuse, excuse me, 65 60 on Saturday. Let's take a look at the line history here for this one. We'll start with the spread. From a spread scenario, uh, Clemson opening up at minus seven, got up to seven and a half. They're back at seven. No movement at all. From a total scenario, this opened up at 144 and a half, uh, you know, now at 145 and a half. So we have a one point move to the over. And then cash wise, first off, all the money is on the over 78% of the tickets and 99% of the cash. And from a spread look, uh, it's 50 50. You know, Clemson has 46% of tickets and 52% of the cash. Wine Time Sports is staying away from this game as well, but he did lean Clemson. Robert Martin says Georgia Tech is the player. Yellow Jack is good at home. Robert Martin says Clemson is good, but Georgia Tech awesome at home at the Hive. Uh, but there is Rebenga in play here. Take it away for us, Cab. Your next spot on the board, Clemson, Georgia Tech. So I love how you intro that game. The revenge is huge for me in this because, you know, you know, not just on paper, I mean, on the eye test, on everything, Clemson's Clemson's a better basketball team than Georgia Tech. But you said it, they lost. Uh, they lost last time they played. In that last game, Georgia Tech shot 50% um, overall in the game, and they also shot 43% from three. You know, I don't, I don't think that's going to happen again. Also in that game, uh, Clemson's finished ahead in the rebounding plus 14. Uh, they were plus three in the turnovers during that meeting in January. Um, and Clemson was also able to put up 90 points in that game. Um, which is outstanding considering how awful of a shooting performance they had. I mean, the fact they put up 90 with how bad that they, they shot should be, this is one of those games that just jumps out and should be a red flag. And honestly, I should probably be on Clemson full game ATS here, not just uh, doing my first half money line parlay, but I just, I accept, I expect Clemson, you know, they're a team right here. They need to stack up some wins. They, they have to, they want payback in this game. Like I said, I think they're a better team than Georgia tech. And that last game was a shootout with Georgia Tech hitting 50% from the field and 43% from three. It's not going to happen again. And if Clemson's going to win, you know, the rebounding margin by plus 10, plus 13, plus 14, like they did last game, and get a whole bunch of second op op chance opportunities, I think this is a good spot for Clemson. I'm taking Clemson in the first half on the money line. I'm putting it with Illinois in the first half on the money line. When I bet it, I got plus 103. I haven't tweeted this, though, Jimmy, so just uh, whatever you can get me, I'm good with. Okay, so it's Illinois first half money line, Clemson first half money line. While I'm going to get that over at Pinnacle, let's talk about your next spot on the board. We head to the American. We've spoken about this game. This is a game that CMAC closed his action on. Charlotte 49ers at Memphis Tigers. A lot of talk in the chat about you know Penny getting these guys ready to play and getting them to play defense. But if anybody's had money on Memphis over the last you know few weeks, it's a horror show late in the game. Can't have foul shots. Can't seal the deal. Take it away for us here. Do you think that, you know, the coach's confidence sticking by this uh, Tiger squad is going to help them here? C-Mac, what's your plan? 49ers, Tigers at FedEx Forum. 
So Memphis is one of those teams that I bet, you know that. Uh, everybody that follows me knows that. I am now even on Memphis, which means I am not positive in the bankroll. I have drank a little juice on Memphis this season when betting Memphis. Um, the only reason I'm even is because I go first half a lot, Jimmy. If I've been going full game, I'd be in the fuck. I'd be in the dumpster with this Memphis team. But I've been first half. So let's talk about what Penny did really quick, because, you know, some people are saying that he outed his players. Some people are saying that he backed them. What he did was call him out. I mean, he really did. He called him out. He put people in the game last game that hadn't played a fucking minute all season, you know, and regardless of if he's going to do that again or not, that proves a point right there. I I'm very interested to see what happens this game. I'm very gun shy about the fact that I pulled the trigger on Memphis first half here, but I did it. Um, you know, the Tigers have won eight of their last 10 home games. They're still playing well offensively, even with their horrible body language. Um, you know, they're putting up more than 80 points per game at home. They've you you talked about their free throw um, free throws. They're still you know seventy four percent at home on their free throws. I would like it to be a little better, but good news is first half free throws are still important. It's not the same when as you go full game. Full game you have to have them. Like end of story. First half you may or may not be sitting at looking at a few uh, one and one opportunities at the end. Another thing Memphis has done at home is they've done a good job protecting the ball. I don't think they're going to give the 49ers a lot of easy scoring opportunities, which is important for me. Um, 49ers have played well defensively, but not as good on the road, really. And I think they're going to have a hard time slowing Memphis down here. I, th I, th I think Penny finds a way to motivate the guys. I think that him calling them out should motivate them. I say this, David Jones is the best player on the court, and it's not even close, okay? You look at, like, all of the players on he's the forward for Memphis. He's the best player on the court. There, there's no question about that. Um, Quinterly, he's been ass. I think C Mac touched on him a little bit. He's a little too sporadic, but he is a great basketball player. He's just been ass. He has a lot of potential. Memphis has too much talent. Okay. And you look at these 49ers, they've uh won three of their last four games. Um but in those games, they've struggled offensively bad. They're barely putting up more than 65 points per game on the road. They don't rebound the ball as well as the Tigers do, so they're not going to get a lot of those uh, second-chance scoring opportunities. Um, and they've been careless with the ball. So I just see this as Memphis is going to protect the ball a little better. I think Memphis is going to get the boards. Um, and if you give me the team that's going to protect the ball, get the boards, and has the better offense, I like it. So I took the Tigers. Um, I got minus two in the first half, or minus two and a half in the first half. Did you tweet this one out? Yes, I did. Okay, let's lock it in for you, Cab. Memphis, first half, what was the juice? Uh, minus 108. Uh, so first half, minus 2.5, minus 108? Yep. Okay, first half, minus 2.5, minus 108. I get, I get the psychology behind backing Memphis. It's going to be interesting. But I get it, backing Memphis first half. Uh, expecting them to show a lot of heart here, uh, or the, as much as they're capable of showing after, uh, you know, the, the presser from Penny. So I get it. Cab on Memphis first half minus two and a half. Let's roll into the final spot on Dabby Cab's board. Uh, by the way, Dan Bonner got you that uh, Illinois first half money line, Clemson first half money line at plus 100. Pinnacle giving you that at plus 102. That's what we'll use, plus 102. And let's get to the big one. Now, again, I hope you follow Dabby Cab on Twitter because uh, he puts out all of his action and asks for nothing in reply asks for nothing he just puts out his action uh, to be held accountable uh, so that there's meaning uh, behind the uh, angles and the bets that he makes you know and so he gave this out a minus four and a half and it's now a minus six and a half this got up to minus seven at 11 last night it's now at minus six and a half now bet online never had it at four and a half uh bet online opened this at five but at that point, it was juiced to LSU, so I see why there were four and a half on the board. Uh, so we have a one and a half point move towards Kentucky. I uh, got a lot of interesting information here uh, from Cappers in the chat. Uh, Paul One Up says uh, Kentucky's coming off a big win at Auburn, a televised ESPN game. Uh, I don't think that's a good spot for a young team uh, like that. So he uh, a little concerned here for. So. Uh, yeah. I want to respond to that. And because I like our guy, poor one up, he dropped some good stuff in the chat and we're not yeah. always going to think the same things. So I get it. That, that was a, that was a 
huge win going on the road to Auburn, winning the way people don't go to Auburn and win the way Kentucky did. But this is a Kentucky team that's recently lost two home games. They lost to Tennessee at home. They lost to Gonzaga at home. Um, and I don't think that one bounce back win is going to give them enough of a good, happy feeling to just be like, oh, okay, let's pump the brakes here. I mean, you just got beat at home twice, back to back. You better be ready still. You better still be hungry because if you're not, then, man, Calipari is going to – his ass is going to be out the door. If he doesn't have this team ready, just because they're ranked 17 and they're Kentucky, trust me right now, if they don't do something in this tournament, his job, he might be on the hot seat. I'd put him on the hot seat. If, if, if Kentucky doesn't do something this year, I'd get him out. I'm just, I'm just going to say that right now. Well, they're just tied for fifth in the SEC right now. So, uh, yes, 17th overall. But you're right. Uh, th this is must-win time here. We have a very high total. Opened up at 164. It's dropped to point to 163 here. Let's take a look at the cash flow for this spot. We have 41% of the tickets and 52% of the cash towards Kentucky. Then from a total side of things, 53% of tickets, 62% cash on the under. Uh, you talked about whether or not the market move was cash related or injury related as well. I'd like you to touch on that. So keep rolling here. Wildcats, Tigers, we're in Baton Rouge for this huge basketball game. I don't have a hundred percent confirmation on this, but I think that cook uh, for LSU could be the right reason why this line moved so quickly, uh, Jalen cook. And if he's out, I would take a long pause before I bet LSU because with him in, you know, he's their best player. He gives them, he gives them a little bit more of a running shot, but with him out, that's going to be a big blow to LSU. Um, and I look at the Wildcats, even talking about those two losses at home, it does seem like they've been on a mission lately. Um, you know, and their their recent success talking about Auburn, I don't look at that as a letdown spot. I look at it as a sustainable success that they're going to build on top of. Um, you know, LSU did just grab that ranked win over South Carolina also. So if we want to talk about letdowns, like, let's be honest, LSU is the team that's not really playing for as much as Kentucky's playing for, and they just beat a ranked team in South Carolina. That's a huge win for LSU. If anybody lets down, I would think it would be LSU in this spot, not Kentucky. Um, and you look, LSU has lost two of their last three home games, so it's not like they protect their home court. Um, they just flat out don't have a home strong home court advantage. Um, and I talk about, you know, talent. We don't want to just talk about that, but God, Kentucky is riddled with talent. Um, you look at what Reeves has been doing. He's been a scoring machine for Kentucky lately. Um, you know, he's putting up 15 or more every night, and he can easily go off for 25-plus against this LSU defense. I mean, easily. And we talk – you got two offenses and two defenses on the court here. Kentucky's offense is the best unit on the court without question out of these four units. There's no ifs, ands, or buts about it. Uh, they're ranked seventh in efficiency, and they're going up against an LSU defense that's ranked 87th. Um, I just, I don't think there's going to be a lot of stops in here for the Tigers. So, you know, as much as the Tigers want to pull out, you know, another big win right after that win against South Carolina, I think their momentum squashed here, Jimmy. Um, I think Kentucky's on a, on a mission here. They got to improve their NCAA tournament seed. You just said it. They're not doing good in conference. Get that rank out of the way. They've got to boost their seed for this tournament. I think Kentucky's hungry. Uh, I think Kentucky comes out firing. I got them first half. I got them full game. And you did a great job at, getting in at the right time first half minus two at minus 110 full game minus four and a half at minus 110 for dabby cab bj also moved at the right time his max bet uh best bet kentucky minus four and a half five unit banger for bj bj and Dabby Cab both at minus four and a half. So I'm sure the question from Cappers in the chat, at, at what point, at, to what number would you say this is still good? I would still bet it at six and a half, Jimmy. Honestly, I think, I, and you, especially if Cook's out, excuse my stammering there for a second, but if Cook's out, I'd put this number at eight and a half if he's not playing in the game. So yeah, I still think, and even if he's in, I still like Kentucky here. I do. I, I, I got no problem with anybody that wants to hop on a six and a half. We got locked in uh, our guy, Dabby Cavs cash six of his last seven. That six game winning streak snapped on Thursday. He's got the first half money line parlay, Illinois Clemson first half money line parlay at plus one Oh two. He's got Memphis first half minus two and a half minus one Oh eight. And he's got the double up on Kentucky first half minus two minus one ten, and full game minus four and a half minus one ten. And Troy Torrance saying that seven and a half is the key number uh michael johnson wanting to talk about uh, the under uh for this one here 
I can let you know that uh, Mikey Money is going to be talking about this game as well, Kentucky LSU, so we can ask him about the total. Unless you have a feel for the total, Tabby, do you have a feel for the total at 163? At 163? Mm, no, I, I'm, I don't want I don't want I don't want to say something, even if it is a lean. I don't want to say it just to say it. No, because I don't know what I'm going to get out of LSU uh, offensively. I know what I expect out of Kentucky's offense. I don't know what I expect out of LSU's offense here. I feel you. Uh, the market is moving it towards the under at this point, slightly, very high total. JP says, I don't trust Kentucky. Says Gonzaga is not a good team this year. Uh, Yo, I, I can't hear that. Gonzaga is not a bad basketball team. I get. They're not Gonzaga of old, but they're not a bad basketball team. Watson can flat out fucking play. And while all this is happening, don't forget about our confidence pool for the NCAA tournament. You oh, have yeah. 100 points to build your roster of teams. A one seed costs 16 points. A 16 seed costs one point. You have 100 points to build your roster. So we'll know everybody's action throughout the tournament. Like it's, you just got to put it in once. There's no. Oh, okay. So if you win, you get a point no matter what your. Uh, no, it goes up. I think I forget how it goes up. But uh, five points, I think, for the first round, 10 for the second round. Uh, I think it, uh, 24, okay. 16. I, I've got to go over it again. But uh, you get more points as your team moves on. That's yeah. cool. I can't wait to get in that. I need to get mine. Uh, Get mine ready. I'm going to start looking at it. So as soon as that drops, I'm going to be on top of that. It's really fun. It's really fun. So that'll be all set up and we'll all be talked about before, obviously, before the the seeds are announced. Uh, great job, Dabby Cab. We will see you back in action tomorrow. Stay hot. Get that cash and support our guy, Dabby Cab, alongside Dutch Boy Fresh tonight in All About the Hoops Wednesday night live bet stream uh, and follow him on X. And of course, he'll be here on Wednesdays and Thursdays. And then he is uh, on Saturday alongside C-Mac. Dabby Cab, any last words for the Capper Sport in the show? Man, uh, you know, it's all love, Jimmy. We go on the same side. We go on opposite sides. But we don't have anything without you guys in this chat. My favorite thing to do is to get up here and see people who are on the other side, to learn, to get different angles. Um, I fucking love it, man. You guys are the best out there in the chat, man. So shout out to all you guys. Uh, and I can't wait to see you all tonight. Let's get that money, Jimmy. Respect. Respect our guy Dabby Cab in the house. Robert Martin saying uh, Cook is out. I have not seen that confirmed anywhere. Um, the latest injury updates were last night. And Cook is just day to day. Uh, he practiced yesterday. So um, it's crucial that we give out information that's on that that is legitimate, uh, Robert Martin. So if you know that Cook is out, it's nowhere online, so you must have found this information out. Oh, Cook, not out. Okay, thank you. Uh, very, very crucial that the information that we give out uh, is correct. So uh, whether it be here on camera or in the chat. All right, let's bring on your next guest. He is the star of Last Call here, Monday through Friday at 6 p.m. Eastern. I miss our live bet streams, but we are heading into the thoroughbred Triple Crown season so you're going to see a lot more of them uh, live betting horses, at least the straps. But right now it's time to get that cash in college basketball. He has had a very strong season, 73 and 65, hitting at 52.9%, a plus 4.89 units ROI, plus 3.54%, an average line at minus 101. We've seen him take uh, the dogs on the spread as well as on the money line, which has at times pushed his average line to plus money. Please welcome from Rochester, New York City. Sweet, sweet Rochester, New York City. Mr. Mikey Money in the house. Mikey, how are you? What up, Jimmy? Shout out to this chat out there. Look at you guys. Troy, North Ender, Londo, Chris Comantini, my homie, Wine Tom, my brother from another mother, Bo Jackson out there, Robert Martin. Lots of fun here. We got a great card. It's glad to see you back in the straps here, rocking with this thing, pulling the chariot, if you will, all the way to the finish line. Let's go. Let's get some cash. Let's get some cash. And you have a huge card here. I'm looking forward to hear your plan. Uh, also, a uh, lot of love for Last Call. And you're doing a great job there. But let's get right to it. Like Dabby Cab and C-Mac before you, all of you started with Illinois Penn State. We had C-Mac moving on Penn State plus 7.5 minus 108. We had uh, Dabby Cab move on Illinois first half money line with Clemson first half money line. Mikey, what are you doing here? Take it away. Illini, Nittany Lions. At Bryce Jordan Center. Look, the Big Ten, the home team, the home dog in the Big Ten has been dominant here. And, uh, you know, not mad at anybody that's on that Illinois 
But um, this is the Super Bowl or the big game, if you will, for uh, Penn State in this situation here. They really don't have much more going on for their season. It's been disappointing and dismal at this point. You know, they're sitting down significantly behind in the conference. They're they're at six and nine, and they got a nice little ten and four record. But uh, you know, at the end of the day, they're just not covering spreads. How be it though? Here comes that home dog situation. You guys have already heard a lot of the breakdowns. I think the big one that's kind of been um, neglected here is the Terrence Shannon effect and uh, the lack of the book's ability to read where this guy's at because he kind of he snuck out of there with these injuries midseason. So early in the season, they were dominant in Illinois. Uh, Terrence Shannon gets out there. They still covered a bunch of spreads because they couldn't figure out. They over-adjusted the number for him. He comes back in. They still haven't fully, I think, pulled the bar back up. And now we're starting to see it get there here. And, uh, you know, shout out. Illinois has been dominant and racing all year long here. Terrence Shannon's a 21 and a half pointed game guy. So, you know, all due respect to what he's got going on here. But uh, this Big Ten, you know, um, home dog situation is just too real right now. Uh, away favorites in the Big Ten when their opponents off a loss are four and 11 in those spots out there. And again, you got a Penn State team fired up and ready to go. Every single number I looked at suggests, um, you know, away favorites in the Big Ten, 74.9 to 74.8. Uh, when the opponent's off the loss, 74.4 to 75.9. And I think we can capitalize on this market, just not knowing exactly where to put the number or bury the flag when it comes to this Illinois team. We got some numbers out there now that are looking like eights. And uh, and I want to get involved in that there. You know, I looked at a number of different spots here uh, when it came down to it. I just think here's the opportunity for us to jump on this Big Ten home dog off the loss situation out there. They've been dominant. I got it with Kanye Cleary. I get it, you know, but. I'm a firm believer that a lot of these players are baked into the numbers when you see these trends as well. So uh, I'm not going to sit there and, and need to see if this guy's in or out for me. These numbers all suggest it's tight. And uh, and I think we see tight. So not to belabor this game. We've got a lot to cover in this spot here. I'm all over this Penn State spot. I don't, I'm not going to go money line. You know, sometimes you see me jump on these money line spots here. I'm not going to say that they're going to come out here and win this game. Although I do think, you know, if I'm going to take a dog, there's got to be an opportunity for these guys to win the game. But um, I think in this point here, eight points is going to be too many. Uh, shout out to our guy, Billy Briz, who's always talking. Eight means they got to win by double digits out there. And Penn State's one of those teams that can find a way to pull up and stymie you at the very end. Uh, it's either a blowout or they cover this thing in a one point type of game here. And I'm going to I'm going to count on this being the biggest game Penn State has pretty much left until the Big Ten tournament uh, for their season. So give me the plus eight. Can't get you the plus eight right now unless you can. Although seven and a half are now minus 105. So I could look at what it would cost for an eight. Uh, we couldn't find it for C-Mac, but he had a minus 108. So there is a little bit of juice heading towards uh, Illinois at this point. Uh, points bet's got a plus eight at minus 110. You got it. Plus eight at minus 110. All right. We have Mikey Money and C-Mac both on Penn State plus the points. Let's move on to the next spot on the board for Mikey Money. And we head to the Patriot League, 7 p.m. Eastern. The Navy Midshipmen, 8-17, and 4-10 and 10 in conference at Loyola, Maryland, Maryland Greyhounds, 6-21, and 4-10 and 10 in conference. We're in Baltimore for this one. Now, these two squads met on Saturday, January 27th. Uh, Loyola, Maryland went into Navy uh, and beat the Beat them 74-70. Uh, uh, Navy shot 39.3 from the field and 27.3 from three. It was one of those prototypical Navy games. They only turned the ball over three times. They played clean basketball. They just played shitty basketball and lost. Uh, Loyal Maryland turned the ball over 15 times and still won because they dominated the boards. Dominated, dominated. 41-25 on the boards. Uh, so that was on January 27th. They meet again now in Charm City. and. Loyola, Maryland coming off a loss at Lehigh Valley, 75-70. Uh, uh, right now, these are the bottom two teams in the conference. Uh, everybody looking up at Colgate, uh, there's really no – I mean, Lafayette second. but uh, And Navy is in the throes of a real legit losing streak as well. To add another uh, layer on this, uh, Navy has now lost eight straight basketball games. That loss at home to Loyola, Maryland was the second loss uh, of these eight in a row. Take a look at the line history then uh, for this one here. Get the spread from a spread perspective. Uh, interesting that Loyola Maryland opened up at, at plus one and a half and now plus two uh, against a team that's lost eight straight. Uh, fishy. Uh, so not only right now, Ben Line is maybe a favorite, but it's juiced 
towards him at minus 115. Uh, this total opened up at 129 and a half, and it's now at 132 and a half. Did get up to 133. And then from a cash flow perspective, uh, great to see for show 94 in the house. Uh, you know, him, Robert Martin, uh, Rez Mob, a lot of these guys uh, ran with us, uh, you know, when I was down in Costa Rica. So I love seeing them here in the chat. Uh, from a cash flow side uh, of things here with this one, we have, uh, let me get to this. Uh, we have uh, 53% of the tickets and 59% of the cash on the under. 53 and 59 on the under, uh, even though this has climbed three points. And then from the spread perspective, you have, 32% of the tickets and 40% of the cash on Navy. Uh, 32 and and 40 on Navy. Line moving in the direction. Take it away for us. Maybe you can uh, find some clarity. Uh, do you, are you surprised that a team on an eight-game losing streak would be a favorite and the line even move towards them, Mikey? How are you betting it? I think they want you to look at this game and think that this is a gift for Navy. And, uh, you know, why not? A team hasn't won. They've covered two spreads since the start of 2024. I mean, you're getting a low number on the home team. You got to take them in the revenge spot here, but Navy's terrible. This is a bad team out there. And if you look at the numbers, this calculates out based on these, on the, if it's a one and a half point favorite, that means they got about an 82% chance of winning this game. Just think about that for a minute. They they've lost what they haven't covered in 10 straight. They've only covered twice in this calendar year. And you're saying they got an 82% chance of beating this Loyola Maryland team that's already dominated them. Last place is up for grabs. You mentioned that out there. These two teams are playing for everything and then some when it comes to getting out of the cellar. Yeah, you've got this Loyola team at 6-21, and 21, Navy at 8-17. and 17, But uh, there's a bad team and there's a worse team in this team. And I think that this case here, Navy is that worst team. The big guy to mention here is the Baltimore guy and Deion Perry. Uh, the last time they played these two teams back on uh, in January, uh, he scores 30 points. Goes out there, runs, shop, and gets the job done. That tells me he's coming in motivated for this game here. He knows what's at stake. And if they got to lean on this guy to get the job done, then they will. He's averaging 17.4, but that was a big spot opportunity for him to go out there and dominate kind of the in-state situation, if you will. And uh, that, for this game here, means everything to them. So I'm going to go with this. Uh, I'm going to go with this Loyola Maryland team here. We talk about all the numbers, but it just comes down to – uh, you got to be fucking crazy to go out there and lay points with Navy to get this job done. Uh, you know, I've also got a little situation with your last team situation. When you played a previous team out there, I've been tracking that kind of posse of crew of previous teams you've played. You're 73 and 174 in those next games as well. So uh, losing those games on average 71 to 74. Uh, this case here, though, because it's juiced up to the Navy side of things, you know, I've done the point calculations before with you guys where we kind of look at how much is that point valued at here? And I'm going to take the plus two because I think, again, we're getting a low value spot for this plus two situation where, um, you know, this game should be probably a minus 110 money line on both sides of it, maybe. Uh, but we've got Loyola with the home court getting the job done. And I'm going to take the plus two. Plus two at minus 105 for yep. the Greyhounds in Charm City. Uh, Loyola plus two at minus 105. We roll on. We roll on to the A-10, the number 16th ranked Dayton, uh, Dayton, Daytona, Dayton Flyers, 21 and 4, 11 and 2 in conference at George Mason Patriots, 17 and 8, 6 and 6 in conference. We're in Fairfax, Virginia. Uh, Dayton bounced back from that pretty ugly loss at VCU at 49, 47. They smashed Duquesne at home and then they beat Fordham at home. 78-70 on Saturday. Uh, George Mason's won two straight. They were in the throes of a losing streak. Uh, they went and beat Davidson in a tight one, 57-55, and carried that over against you know the weak link in the one of the weak links in the conference. George Washington beating them 90-67. Now they beat them last uh, Tuesday, so now we're eight days off. Uh, Dayton did play on Saturday. So there has been a rest advantage for George Mason. Wine time on Dayton minus two and a half in this spot. Let's get into the line history here for it. First off, uh, Dayton now three point favorites at Bet Online. They opened up at two. Uh, they got up to three and a half at 1230. Uh, they're back at three. It's not a real three. It is juice to them. So you will see three and a halfs on the board. And then from a total perspective here, here, sorry, from a total perspective, we're dealing with a 134. This opened up at 134 and a half. It's dropped a half point. And then cash wise, 50% of the tickets and 67% of the cash is on Dayton. So bigger bets are coming in on Dayton. From a total perspective, 62% of the tickets, 59% cash is on the under. 
take it away for us here. Mikey, Dayton, Flyers, George Mason, Patriots. Yeah, I know the, the previous guys said the same thing about this time of year being so great because we've got big things around the corner with the tournament, but we also have kind of some more clarity, if you will, of what's going on in these conferences and how these teams have performed and who's playing for what here. And uh, Dayton, for me, is the spot that's much stronger defensively out there. Um, and I think all around numbers, they're a stronger team. If you kind of go by the numbers, they're averaging 74 points a game to 73 and a half. Uh, they're shooting 47.6 to 46.9. Uh, the three-pointer, 39% from three to 35.9%. Um, I think the opportunity for these guys here is uh, fading the home ten, eight, the home dog in the A-10. You know, we talked about the Big Ten home dogs and the advantage they have. The SEC and the Big 12 schools have tremendous home court advantages as well. But in the A-10, it doesn't matter for shit. The home dog in the A-10 is 3-14 and 14 against the spread in those spots out there. The average line they're facing is 4.1. And we're seeing a final score where they're winning these games by nine points. So, um, you know, when it comes to what these teams are playing for right now, uh, Dayton's got, you know, I think kind of the, they've got the opportunity to go out there and stamp their own ticket and make this progress as they move into the tournament, but they can't afford to screw around with this game here. They got to come out there. They've won eight of their last 10, but we've got a double revenge spot because we've seen that, you know, this George Mason team has whacked these boys in the last two meetings that they've had out there. So these guys got to come in fired up, ready to go. They got a defensive advantage, in my opinion, with the, the home dog situation in the A-10. There's a lot going for this Dayton team. And um, I just don't think George Mason's going to be able to match them on the defensive side of the ball. I think this is going to be a situation where we've seen it before. As we move into the second half, these guys are going to start to pull away. Um, their average margin of victory per game on the road is 11 and a half points a game. That's because they're out there and they're coming out and they're, they're exploiting a weaker defense out there. So four road wins in conference, comfortably covering spreads, comfortably getting those double digit numbers out there. Five, two and one against the spread on the road this season. Two, oh, and one as a road favorite this season. Uh, I'm jumping in with these boys. Uh, but here's the thing. So we've done the calculation. You guys have seen me do the calculation before. You know, we're looking at what's the number you've got now? Two and a half and threes. Uh, there's a two at Bovada minus 115, a two and a half at Will Hill minus 110. Uh, the sharper books are moving uh, much quicker towards Dayton. Yeah, this is a spot where I'm going to jump in on this money line here. Um, yeah, fuck it. If you can get the minus two, I'll, I'll take the minus two. Um, yeah, I'll take the minus two. Minus two at minus 115 for Dayton Flyers for Mikey Money. We roll Actually, on. You know what? I'm, sorry. I'm sorry. I don't mean to. I don't mean to waffle on this one here. Uh, shout out to our last guy. I see the money lines at minus one thirty. You see a money line around minus one thirty? Uh, let me check here. We'll move over to the ah, shit, the money lines here. Uh, and by the way, we want Dabby Cab to waffle because he's six and zero in the he's waffle play today. So we <laughs> want him to waffle badly. I'm, I'm always uh, hoping that he doesn't want to track it though. He doesn't want to track it. I said, I'll track it for you, man. You're fired. Uh, I will as well. <laughs> I, with, with pleasure. All right, let's grab this uh, here. Dayton minus minus one thirty five is the best we can get. Can you beat that? Uh, no, no, I'm seeing one. I'm seeing one forties, one fifties, one sixties and one seventies. I'll stick with the minus two. Minus two is good. All right, minus two, minus one fifteen. All right, let's roll. We head over to the Sun Belt. Sun Belt action, seven p.m. Eastern. A lot of people want to talk about this spot because James Madison Dukes, twenty four and three, eleven and three in conference at the Marshall Thundering Herd, twelve and fifteen, seven and seven in conference for the Cam Henderson Center in Huntington, West Virginia. Let's roll here. Uh, let's roll here. James Madison uh, winning basketball games again. Had a little bit of a hiccup uh, earlier in the year, but they are rolling. And they have beaten Marshall, and they beat them badly. 67-52 at home on Saturday, January 20th. Beat Marshall by 15. They beat Marshall by 15 despite shooting 38.7% from the field and 21.7% from three. Uh, they weren't the only team that shot poorly in that game. Marshall was horrible. 29.5% from the field and 23.5% from three for Marshall in that spot. Uh, but James Madison been winning basketball games. So let's go over their recent uh, form. Uh, they have won, uh, well, their last five of all, actually not the Arizona or Arkansas State game wasn't double digits, but all the rest have been double digits. Uh, they just beat Georgia State by 20 and followed it up by just squeaking by Georgia Southern 
by seven. Uh, Georgia Southern is five and nine in conference, so it's not like they're fat and happy. Uh, from a coaching perspective, it'd be pretty easy to get them ready to go because if they play like they played against Georgia Southern, they'll lose this game. Marshall has lost three straight. Those three were all on the road. Now, at home, they beat up on Coastal Carolina, but that came on the heels of a debacle against the weakest team in the conference, Old Dominion, losing at home to Old Dominion, 83-76. But Coastal Carolina got their revenge. Uh, they just finished three games on the road. They haven't played at the Cam Henderson Center uh, since February 3rd. So 18 days they haven't played at home. And now they come home to play James Madison. This is a big one. And, you know, you can wonder, will they fill it up for James Madison? Uh, they had 5,711 for Coastal Carolina. You have to think that they'll be able to fill up the Henderson Center here for a game against these Dukes. Let's get into the line history for this one. Sorry, I got it up, uh, set up for money line. Let me just switch it back to uh, spread here, uh, and let's set this one up. So, oh, God, sorry. I thought I had it set up here, and I don't. Uh, here we go. James Madison right now is at plus seven at minus 150. Now, we do see sixes on the board. This opened up at seven and a half, went down to six and a half. There's a half point of buyback. So we're sitting at seven. There's been a half point move towards Marshall. And then let's get into the total. Uh, from a total standpoint, this opened up at 152 and a half. It's now 155 and a half, a three point move towards the over. And then when we get to the cash flow, you have 80% of the tickets on James Madison and 66% of the cash. Marshall is at 20 and 34. Now, I've been waiting for everything to correlate. I've been waiting for it to correlate, and not one spot on the board, on the entire board, has done it in what I'm looking for until now. This all for me with the public all over James Madison. Uh, Marshall on a three game losing streak on the road, now coming home uh, in a game that means so much. Now we're talking. I have an idea of where Mikey's going on this. And I expect to be right with them. Take it away, Mikey. Dukes, Thundering Herd. Yeah, we've made a ton of cash with the Dukes, right? There's no question about it. I've said before, there's not a lot of value in fading the Dukes until today. And uh, yeah, we're going to jump in and we're going to take the spot. Yeah, the revenge opportunity is great and all that. Again, it's a situation where Marshall's got a ton to play for here. This game, they got App State next, and then they close off the year with Georgia Southern. So uh, the definitely the biggest part of their schedule is kind of right in front of them right now to close this thing off. And, you know, it's not a great season for these guys. They're bottom half, if you will, of the pack here. Uh, they're top of the bottom third, I guess, is the best way to call these guys. Um, but, you know, you look at kind of how they played and as of late in form here, I think there's a lot of reason. When we've got James Madison uh, sitting there with a seven or larger, um, when it comes to road games, they're nine and eight against the spread in a lot of these spots here. They're just not covering this number. We're seeing that if you looked over the history of what's been going on with James Madison, you look at this recent form with these guys here, uh, Ark State, they're laying four and a half. They cover by, they win by four. Uh, they're getting one and a half against Appy on the road, and they lose that game 82-76 outright. So I know it's kind of small sample in recent form, but here's the thing I like about this Marshall side of things. They've got double-digit scores, and you guys have heard me talk about before what happens with the James Madison team is they've got kind of like the upper echelon of the conference and player performance. And uh, they just wear teams down and beat them up. But, you know, you look across the board with Marshall, one, two, three, four double-digit scorers out there. And the thing that Marshall does, you know, in terms of kind of hanging, they're not scoring at a prolific pace. They're averaging 73.6 points a game. Uh, and, uh, you know, they're going roughly around 47% in terms of their uh, field goal. They're not going out there and roasting teams to get the job done. But defensively, they're still playing with heart. You know, they've got averaging 39.3 rebounds a game. They're going out there getting almost 16 assists a game, which to me says they're playing with some, maybe it's false confidence, but they're moving the ball around. They're keeping the other team on their toes. And, uh, you know, they're averaging seven steals and four and a half blocks a game. So not a shabby little spot here for a team that, you know, if you look at this James Madison situation, yeah, killing it, got it, crushing it. They've won 19 of their last 20 night games, but here's that revenge spot, a big opportunity and another little posse of tracking teams here. If you just played a team like Georgia Southern, you come out and roll out 73 and 174 in those next games. Yeah, you're you're losing those games by a total of 71 to 74. I'm not going to say that they're a live dog again like that Penn State situation here, but I think Marshall can give them hell for, for the up and down 40 minutes of this game and uh, play just defensively enough to hang within this number. On the other side of things, you know, um, clearly, you know, James Madison has the ability to play that bully ball, beat teams up. 
take their spirit. But uh, Marshall's too stupid to know how bad they are. And I think it's a good opportunity for us to jump in and take that plus seven. I love it. Uh, I love it. I'm going to be um, finally. God, I was like, when's this card going to form here? Okay. Uh, I love it. So I'm, I'm going to rock with you here. There are no more. I love that Tori got the seven and a half. It's a nice hook to have. Uh, this is, there are sevens. Uh, unfortunately, they all come with a nickel cost. Uh, do you have a seven that doesn't cost minus 115? No, I saw that as well. That's uh, that's the best number I've got. But we're seeing it come down to six and a halfs now and on its way to sixes. So we've got reverse line movement as well. I mean, that's you talk about I know I know you like this one here. Revenge spot. We got the dog at home coming off some losses, reverse line yeah. movement. So it like checks every single box that we look for to take advantage of here. And um, you know, I think I think in this case though, we want that full game because James Madison comes out fired up in a lot of these games, and um, we've seen him kind of fall falter in the first half uh, on the road. But over the course of the long game here, I think um, I think they just they just get tired of playing this Marshall team and they start thinking ahead to what they've got on deck for the last two games of the season. So love the spot. Another thing, though, I, I don't want the first half. I want the full game. Usually I would veer towards the first half. But here, just because of James Madison kind of barely showing up against Georgia Southern, from a coaching perspective, I do think that it'd be pretty easy to get them ready to go. Because if they play like that here, Marshall, they're going to lose on the road. Like it'd be, It's a pretty easy angle to see them come out okay, but I, I like it. Um, I like it. I like it. I, I'm right with you. So I've got something now, and maybe more. So let's roll on. Let's roll on. Now, unfortunately, in that spot with Marshall James Madison, we're going up against Smooth Ball's play of the day uh, with our guy Jay Smooth, uh, who you will get to smooth, meet. Baby. You will get to meet him in San Antonio's Money in the Bank. Let's roll on. 7 p.m. Eastern is our next spot. This is a big one. The number eight ranked Duke Blue Devils, 20 and 5, 11 and 3 in conference at Miami Hurricanes, 15 and 11, 6 and 9 in conference. Uh, Robert Martin says James Madison goes up 10 in the first five minutes and it's done. They win by 10 plus. That's what everybody thinks as well. Robert Martin, so you got a lot of company. 80% of the tickets are right with you. <laughs> What could go wrong? You're uh, just join with your friends and bet James Madison. Go to the window, get your cash. It's too fucking easy. It's only seven. Are you kidding? Marshall's terrible. <laughs> 15 and 11 are the Hurricanes, six and nine in conference with the Watsco Center in Coral Gables, Florida. Let's get into this spot here. We'll start with the situation Duke's won four straight, Miami's lost four straight. Uh, mm -hmm. crucial crucial uh <laughs> you know run for both of these teams and duke coming off that 76 67 win at florida state uh duke 11 and 3 just a half game back in north carolina in the acc and the hurricanes are scuffling uh they're scuffling so their entire season is on the line here their entire season's on the line in this game they beat duke it's right up there on their resume and they probably get the tourney tonight. They get they lose their fifth straight game. They're going to have to win the conference tournament to have a chance at the tourney. Everything on the line for this Miami team. Who just lost back-to-back -back road games? So, yeah, they've lost four straight. Only one has come at home. A three-point loss to the league, the conference-leading Tar Heels, where they covered. So here we go. Uh, from a, a line history standpoint, we have Miami now plus six and a half. So unlike the spot with Marshall, the line is not moving towards the U. Uh, five and a half to six and a half. Now, the immediate move was, it wasn't immediate. It took nine hours, but the first move was towards Miami. That's no longer happening. Uh, not only is it moved to six and a half, but it is juiced towards that six and a half with Duke as well. Uh, and uh, Justin McKelvey says Miami going to storm the court tonight. Going to storm the court tonight. Here we go. From a total side of things here, we are dealing with a 149.5 juice to the under. Uh, this opened up at 150.5. Now 149.5, .5, one point move towards the under. Then when we get to the cash flow, and I apologize for not having it set up already. Uh, come on, show me Miami so I don't fucking lose it. Uh it's so important to know where the cash is here because we see the move uh, towards Duke. Uh, here we go. 
Twenty-seven percent of the tickets and thirty-five percent of the cash is on Duke. So the public backing Miami and the market not moving in the direction. Fifty-eight percent of tickets, eighty-eight percent cash on the over. Take it away for us here, Mikey Money. We have the stacks play today on the Miami Hurricanes. We have Ron Crawford's spreadsheet play today on the Miami Hurricanes. What is your plan, Duke Miami? Yeah, I'm going to roll in good company. Those boys know what's going on here, and here's the spot, right? So you look at recent performance. Yeah, four games lost, four games win. So easy to come in there and say Miami stinks and this is that and the other thing. And then you look for validation points and you see that Boston College game. They scored 77 points, but where I think their strength is is on defense and they shit the bed, giving up 85 points in that spot there. So uh, as you kind of dig deeper, though, and you start to look at the roster with that game, uh, you know, not not all the horses were running. Nigel Pack sat out of that game out there and uh, they lost a ton of firepower. But I think, you know, shout out to Daddy Cat because he talks about how he watches these teams and he sees how they match up. and. Miami's a team that's got size. They're going to match up with Duke's size out there. Matthew Cleveland, certainly a guy that can go out there and bang around and uh, handle that, or at least hang in with that Duke front court. So, uh, you know, conference home dogs, when they're going against a ranked opponent uh, with a line that's greater than a six, uh, 316 and 218 in those spots. Here's another situation where we've got a 69.5 to a 70.5 type of game projection out there. And, uh, I love this opportunity. The Hurricanes have covered three in a row in their last three home games. I don't think they're just going to come out here and cover the spread, but I'm going to I'm going to take that money line as well. I think they come out here. This is a big game for these boys to get the job done. I like their defense to stand through here. I like them. You know, the thing is, when you look at the Duke game and kind of how they play, there's two things that they're not doing really effectively. One of them is generating turnovers on the ball. So what's happening here, if you kind of look at how Miami plays – they do shoot well, and you got them shooting on their home court where I give them kind of a couple extra points in their back pocket, being that that's their home court and they've got used to those sight lines and kind of the process of the stadium and everything else that goes into it. But they also do a great job in Miami, that is, of limiting second chance points. So you got a Duke team that can go out there. Uh, yeah, they can go and take their half court shots or they can try to move the ball around. But, you know, Miami's going to be stingy with those points out there and those second chance opportunities. They rebound. They generate turnovers on the ball, and I think that's where the mismatch comes into play. Size for size, Miami stacks up nicely against Duke. Huge game for these boys to try to get shit back together and get the right direction when it comes to the to the ACC tournament here. And yeah, Duke's won 14 of their last 15 games against non-ranked opponents, but I don't think all non-ranked opponents are equal here. We're not talking about a Marshall team. We're talking about a team in Miami uh, that just came off of great tournament for results the last couple of seasons. So I think they're going to try to get back to their ways here. And uh, you know, Duke's covered. In their four straight, but before that, they were situationally bad as well. From January 13th to February 3rd, they were one and five against the spread. I love the double dip. I'll take the six and a half. We'll take the money line as well. Line's moving uh, away from you. So we can get you a seven plus seven sure. at minus 108 and a plus 250 on the money yep. line for Mikey Money. All right, we roll on. We roll on. Next up, we head to the A-10 for 7 p.m. action. This is the last 7 p.m. game on our show. Richmond Spiders, 18-7, and 10-2 and two in conference. At Rhode Island Rams, 11-14, and 5-7 in A-10. The Ryan Center in Kingston, Rhode Island. We have Richmond winners of two of their last three. They just beat up on George Washington, as everybody in this conference seems to be doing these days. 90-74 <laughs> on Saturday on the road. Uh, they lost their last home game to UMass, 69-59. Uh, that was last Wednesday. But here they have won two of three, and they head to Rhode Island. Rhode Island losers of two straight. They lost at UMass. They played well, 81-79. Uh, they also beat up on George Washington before that. But they're coming off the loss to at home to Loyola Chicago, 77-67. And they did not play well in that one. 23.5% uh, from three. The issue was on the boards. Uh, they got out-rebounded 43-28 to 28 in that loss. So that is the situation. Rhode Island played on Sunday. Richmond played on Saturday. Let's get into the line history. Sorry, it's on the money line right now. So let's get into the spread here. We have Richmond right now as five-point favorites. Five-point favorites. It's opened up a four and a half. Dropped to four. It's been a long time at four, and it moved to five under an hour ago. About 50 minutes ago, it moved to five. From a total side of things here, we have the – where are the spiders here? Sorry. We have – 
It's sitting at 143 and a half. Open at 144 and a half. So we have a one point move to the under. And then uh, cash wise here, 73% of the tickets and 84% of the cash is on Richmond. 73 and 84. Then 49% and 67% on the under. That's Richmond, Rhode Island. Mikey, take it away. Interesting spot with this game here because um, certainly a big fan of Richmond and, and you know, what they've done um, this season, particularly in the A-10. Uh, when it comes to covering the spread, they've been a dominant team out there. Yeah, they just put boots to ass on that George Washington team. But, uh, you know, I kind of do like George Washington tonight, but that's a different note. But anyhow, as I look at what's going on with this Richmond team, two things that kind of jumped off the table at me. First of all, you know, you're talking about these numbers and kind of the fact that it's kind of pivoted back to that five is huge because – uh, staring at this game last night and then into the early hours this morning, getting up and looking at it again, kind of seeing those numbers concern me for Richmond here. And we've seen Richmond certainly can go out there and, and lay duds. They lose 69-59 on their home court to UMass. Laying a six, there's capability for these guys to underperform. And then I started digging deeper and I thought, well, where do they underperform the most? They underperform when they play this team. For some reason, the last five times, four of the last five times these teams have played, they've generated 133 points or less. Um, you know, when you look at the average between these two teams, uh, you know, we're sitting here looking at a team with Richmond who's averaging, um, you know, somewhere in that 75 point per game per season average right now. But they play Richmond, they're dropping down to 66 points. Or I'm sorry, when they play Rhode Island, they're dropping down to 66 points. So it's kind of an interesting spot here. Their defense in Richmond is very stingy. They only allow 65 and a half points a game out there. And uh, to me, this just kind of feels like we're going to get to this under situation. And the numbers are starting to drop to that 143 and a half. Probably the easiest one that you can find out. There's two situations I've got for you guys. The first one, A-10 conference unders in a rematch game that went under previously. Pretty straightforward. The last time they played, it went under. They're playing again in the same season. It's gone under 25 times out of 32 situations. It's 9-1 and one in its last 10 uh, well-oiled road favorites here. We got this situation where a team's comfortable playing on the road against a lethargic team that's got extra rest going behind them as well. 16 and four in those spots out there. So definitely supporting Richmond, which is going to lead me to my double dip spot here. I'm going to go to Richmond. Uh, I'm going to break that one down though, because I think they get off to the fast hop here on this Rhode Island team. Uh, it is coming off of those back-to-back -back losses. Maybe full game. We've seen Richmond has a propensity to struggle and and throw it away. But Richmond has won five in a row in the first half against this Rhode Island team. Uh, average that we're seeing out there, comfortable cover. I'm going to jump in on that. The last 10 head-to-head, -head, they've been winning the game 70-66. to 66, But as you dissect it and you look at that first half, they're easily getting that number of two. So uh, they're winning these first halves by around five points. So I'm a suspect of Richmond in the full game. Uh, but I want that first half situation. They're dominant in that first half, and it's a great opportunity for them to get off the hop. And I love this under in the first, in the full game at 143 and a half. Uh, what can you get? Uh, si so we get you the 143 and a half minus 108. What can we get you on the side? Uh, uh, minus two and a half at minus 110. All right. Let me see if I can uh, beat that here. Uh, first half action here on Richmond. Uh, wow. Bavada has a one and a half at minus 110. Ah, that beautiful. is a uh, that in Bodog Bavada minus one and a half at minus one ten. Nasty Nate says Ram smash. So uh, Troy Torrance, loving your look on the. Sorry if you hear my son crying out there. I'm trying to stay focused. Yeah, Troy. I, I mean, they under these two teams and the way these two teams pace is is very slow. They're very methodical and strategic around the way that they approach the ball, and it's the runs that make things detrimental to the other side of it. So. Uh, I don't expect that to be the case because Rhode Island does like to keep a little bit of a faster tempo, but I think that could lead to some fast break points as well for Richmond to go out there and kind of get this thing banging in the long term. So yeah, love that under. I think that's that's a, that's a strong spot. You are locked in. You are locked in. Let's oh. roll on. Next up for us, head to the MVC Evansville Purple Aces, fifteen and twelve, six and ten in conference at the UIC Flames, ten and seventeen, three and thirteen in conference. We're at Credit Union One Arena in Chicago, Illinois. Let's get into the rest situation. Uh, Evansville uh, has lost three straight. 
three straight, uh, two on the road and one at home. They uh, All these games have been very, very close. Uh, they lost at Murray State 73-70. They lost at home to Drake 78-75. And then they lost at Illinois State 86-79 on Sunday. UIC also losers of two straight. These are two of the bottom three teams in the conference. Uh, but Evansville quite a bit better than UIC. Evansville 6-10 and 10 in conference by UIC three and 13 uh, UIC lost at Bradley 85 73 and then lost at home to Belmont. Uh, they lost 75 to 60 at home to Belmont. So Evansville losers of three straight UIC losers of two straight. Uh, let's get into the line history here for uh, this one popping off at 8 PM. We have UIC right now uh, sitting as Sorry, move back to bed on the line. Sitting as one and a half point favorites. One and a half point favorites. They open up at one and a half point move towards them to minus one and a half. From a total standpoint, we're sitting here with a 144. Uh, this opened up at 142 and a half, and it got up to 145 uh, before there was any, uh, sen uh, any sense of a buyback. And then from the cash, you have 68% of tickets on UAC, but 42% of the cash. So 32 and 58 on Evansville. The line slightly moving towards UIC and no information on the total. Take it away for us here, Mikey. Next spot on the board in the MVC, Evansville, UIC. Yeah, you know, I talked about yesterday the situation. There's a couple of things to dig into with this game. Surprisingly enough, the Evansville UIC game has got a couple of different angles to talk about here. First of all, we see this number two and a half. Well, at least from my standpoint with the books that I'm using here, open at two and a half. Uh, I see three and a halfs now, uh, predominantly across the board. 31% of the bets, but 58% of the cash, like the Evansville side of things. That's oh, a shit. big Sorry. differential. My bad. Can I, just, can I just fix the mistake? Sorry, I had the first half up because of your Richmond spot. So that was my that was uh, mistake with the line that. shopping. I apologize for that. So, yeah, Mikey's got it right. It's yeah. all uh, threes. Actually, it's all over the board because you have two and a halfs. Uh, I have a two and a half at Bovada. We have a three and a half at other books. So sorry, keep rolling, Mikey. And I apologize yeah. for the mistake on the first half. Oh, you're good. And uh, look, you're you're banging numbers all day here, right? It happens. And that number did seem like a first half spot, but I'm going to go with the full game in this one here. The number I was talking about to start with here, 31% of the bets. So the public loves this UIC team here. The, the, the percentage of bets kind of constitutes tickets, parlays, teasers, Kind of all the all the all the ingredients that go into the soup are where the bets come into play. But it's the bigger cash that I always try to attribute back to, um, you know, bigger betters, maybe sharper betters, syndicates, and things like that. So, fifty eight percent of the cash now coming in on this Evansville plus three and a half. Then take a take a peek down to this money line. You got this thing opens at minus one fifty five. Sixty two percent of the bets, but ninety seven percent of the cash don't want to. They want to forego that two and a half and three and a half. They just want to take the UIC money line. Yet the line went from minus 155 down to minus 140. So kind of a big red flag there if you're thinking UIC as this number starts to break down. And then you look at this thing, and I talked about this yesterday. There's revenge and there's rematches. Not all teams are revenge-oriented. I said this was Syracuse yesterday specifically. NC State's one of the worst teams in college basketball when it comes to the revenge spot. And so is UIC out there. Um, you know, I think it's going to be an opportunity here. We did capitalize on the NC State spot. We capitalized on the grambling plus one and a half situation the other day on last call. And uh, we're going to do it again with this Evansville spot here. I get it. Evansville's lost a ton of road games. They lost 16 in a row on the road against the conference. But I think it ends today. You look at the way these teams play. Look at what UIC does. They allow the most free throw attempts in the Mountain Valley Conference. They don't, very, they don't defend very well in the paint. They don't generate a lot of rebounds as well. Uh, you know, this is going to be a situation where I think that we're going to see Evansville get in the paint. They're going to dominate. They're going to try to rebound. They're going to board. They're going to do everything they did the first time these two teams played. And when you look at it, um, you know, Evansville, the highest three-point shooting percentage in the Mountain Valley. Um, you know, the last time they played, despite the fact that they shoot more threes than anybody else in the conference, they only made four three-pointers in that first time out. So, it was the fact that they got in the paint, they rebounded, and they got second chance opportunities that brought them to victory. And I think those are the intangibles that you know you can you can't coach the heart, right? You can't coach heart and get these guys. You can give them all the techniques and everything else that goes along with it, but um, you know they outscored UIC thirty eight to twenty two in points from the paint the last time they played. 
and uh, shot 25 of 33 from the free throw line. All that's going to be too much, I believe, in this case here for the worst offensive team in the Mountain Valley, which is UIC, just scoring 65 and a half points a game, 11th in field goal percentage in the conference, 7th in three points, and last in free throw percentage. Bad spot for this UIC team here. I'm jumping on the plus three and a half, and I'm taking this money line at plus 140. Well, we can get you a plus four at minus 111. So Perfect. That's a pretty nice spot. So we'll start there. Give you that plus four, minus 111. That's available right now at Pinnacle. So Pinnacle giving you the best line on the Purple Aces. Then from a cash or money line standpoint here with uh, Evansville, the best we can give you, let's see, is he a plus 155? Plus 155. So the Beautiful. patented double up spot for the big score from our Mikey money. So Mikey's got three games left on the board. The first two we have touched on already. So let's move on. Uh, we stay in the MVC for the next one, 8 p.m. Eastern Bradley Braves at Missouri State Bears. And we heard, you know, North Ender talking about this spot. We saw CMAC move on Missouri State plus four on this spot. So let's hear how you're. Uh, what is your plan of attack here with the Braves at the Bears? Yeah, uh, straightforward, right? I'm going to jump in on this Missouri State spot at plus four. Uh, I think that's a great number. And then uh, we have another situation where it's kind of that previous opponent with Bradley uh, where they're going to lend themselves to that 69 and 127 spot here. Uh, Missouri State's won nine of its last 10 uh, on their home court when they have the rest advantage as well. Uh, great opportunity, I think. Ken Palm ranks the Bears 115th. In, uh, in efficiency across the board, 197th offensively, 124th defensively. It's a rounded enough team, in uh, in my opinion, to go down there and handle this Bradley team. Uh, you know, I think, uh, I think yeah, the Braves are certainly capable. Uh, you know, 75th in the nation, 69th in offense, 98th on defense out there. But uh, I just think here's an opportunity with the home court, with the rest advantage where we've seen these guys shine through. I'm not going to belabor it. I know you guys have already talked about it, and, and I love what C-Mac had to say about this thing here. 80% of the bets, 90% of the cash want this Bradley team. Uh, anytime you're on that public road situation, I'm not involved with that one here. Uh, granted, I will give it that Bradley is the better team, uh, but you know, by a, by a margin in this case here, we've got a situation where Missouri State's kind of you know had themselves three straight losses. They got it right at home against Valpa. Uh, they've got two games left after this one to go try to make some seeding here to try to move up the process. And we've got the uh, the third best team in the conference in Bradley uh, coming on their home quarter. I don't think they're going to mess around. I think they're going to give them fits. I think they're going to give them everything they've got uh, to face out there. Eight and four is Missouri State at home. Bradley's split them at five and five on the road. And uh, four points seems like that's plenty enough there for a game that's going to most likely come down to a bucket. I think Missouri State's live outright to get this job, but um, – uh, I, I'm going to take the plus four in this case here. I think it's just a, I think it's a good spot for a single bucket type of game. Last, last, last bucket wins this game. Missouri State plus four minus one oh eight. The same line that CMAC got, still uh, widely available. Let's move to the next spot on the board, and this was a very interesting breakdown. The Kentucky LSU spot that we spoke about. Earlier, uh, Dabby Cab got Kentucky minus four and a half, and so did BJ. BJ and Dabby Cab both moved on Kentucky minus four and a half. And this is what BJ said when he did it. He said, LSU coming off a huge road win for South Carolina as eight point dogs. Kentucky's been very good on the road and covering. He says he doesn't see LSU keeping up with this Kentucky potent offense in transition. Let's hear what Mikey Money has to say about this spot. Wildcats, Tigers, and Baton Rouge. Take it away, Mikey. Shout out to you boys there. Sharp cappers getting in there, and congratulations on your CLV. But you can't cash CLV. You got to go out there and get the job done here. And I think LSU's got more than enough capability. Uh, they're playing well at home. There's no doubt about it. They've got seven night games in a row at home. And, uh, you know, Kentucky definitely – Definitely a team that's out there blistering offenses. They, they've they got the sixth youngest team in the nation, and uh, they're very effective. They're efficient with their shooting. Uh, on the road, they're 5-2. and two. I love seeing that as well. Uh, winning four of six on the road in the SEC. Kudos and shout out to them, boys. But it's this last game that I think is the challenge for them there. They played at Auburn. They held Auburn to 59 points here. Big number to look at. What does Kentucky do after they – 
um, completely dominate defensively the other team out there. Uh, they're 0-8 against the spread those next games out there. It's defined as a team where they've allowed at least 15 points fewer than their expected number out there. And uh, the team total in that Auburn game was 86 and a half. They shut them down by almost 27 points in that situation here. Home dogs off a win versus a team off an ATS win are 44 and 33. Again, we've got this conference situation with the home court advantage. I'm going to run with it here. Big 12 and SEC Wednesday home teams, middle of the week, tough travel spots. Lots of other things to contest with when it comes to getting on the travel in the middle of the week. Uh, 19 and nine in those spots out there. Uh, they're winning these games. You know, their average line that they're seeing is a minus three and a half. So here we go. We're kind of discounting the fact that this LSU team uh, has been hit or miss and mostly miss. So we've got, in my opinion, now 10 points on our side in an average game that we see a win of 79 to 72 coming off that stellar defensive performance. Look, young guys are due to fuck up every now and then. And it happens more often than people care to admit. So in this case here, yeah, we saw that Gonzaga team. And I get it when uh, Dabby was saying the Zags are, they're not, they're not as bad as everybody kind of makes. They're just not as good as they were. And uh, and that was an 89-85 loss there where they were laying five points. They're very capable of going out there and rolling the dud. 103-92 loss to Tennessee on their home court as well. Minus one and a half point favorites in that spot. And, uh, you know, I think this is a situation where we could see much of the same. So I'm jumping in on LSU here to get this cover. And I uh, love the points in the back pocket here. Again, every team I've taken today I think is very, uh, very much – a live dog situation, but give me this home court uh, conference home dogs when the lines less than a 10 out there, um, 352 and 253 overall in those spots, winning those games, 72, 70 as well. Everything shows this to be a tight game and uh, I'll take the points in my back pocket. Uh, the six and a half are almost, well, they're gone at minus 110. We can give you the six and a half at minus 114. What do you got six for the six? At minus one oh Sorry? Yeah, I think I'll, I'll take the six and a half at minus one fourteen. You got it. Plus six and a half at minus one fourteen for LSU. All right, let's rock into our final spot on the board here. 10 p.m. Eastern Mountain West action. The number 22 ranked Colorado State Rams heading to New Mexico, heading to the pit in Albuquerque. Uh, both teams 20 and six, both teams eight and five in a very, very good Mountain West conference, as good as uh, I've ever seen it. Right now, New Mexico is sitting at minus seven at Bet Online. They opened up at minus five. There has been a move towards them. Uh, it got up to seven and a half at 625 this morning. It's now at seven, a two point move towards New Mexico. Let's take a look at the total. From a total side of things, this is our late night uh, action possibility here. We're sitting with a 157. Uh, this opened up at 155 and has climbed to 157 here. So we have a move to the over, a two point move to the over, and a two point move towards New Mexico. Let's take a look at the cash flow here. We have 79% of the tickets on New Mexico and 86% of the cash, uh, the market following where the bets are coming in on New Mexico. 71% taking 72% cash on the under. And then we'll go into uh, the rest and recency situation here. Uh, Colorado State coming off that easy victory over Utah State at home on Saturday. They won by 20, in control the whole time, 75 to 55. That was on the heels of that 71-55 loss at San Diego State. That was their last a road game. You go to the road game prior to that. It was a real, you know, Fresno State four and nine in conference, and and they won by eight. It wasn't very easy, and they won by eight, just eight. At home, they've been very good. Not so much on the road. Uh, New Mexico coming off three of their last four games being on the road, and they won two of them. You know, they dominated a weak Wyoming squad. Uh, then they lost at home to UNLV, 80-77. They bounced back by beating Nevada in Nevada, 83-82. It was a very special performance. Followed that up with a loss at San Diego State. So both teams have just played San Diego State. Uh, the Rams lost, you know, both teams played at San Diego State. Rams lost by 16. And New Mexico lost by 11. The public is on New Mexico. The markets have reacted and have made New Mexico a bigger favorite. Now seven-point favorites. Take it away, Fred. Here, Mikey. Also, Lamont Williams came in, and his max bet is New Mexico minus seven. Take it away, Mikey. Are the Lobos live? 
Yeah, you, you got to go with New Mexico in this spot. Uh, this is the home court advantage and then some. You've talked about the revenge angle. Let's quantify it here. The Mountain West revenge for the home favorites, 73 and 41 over its uh, last, what is that, 115-game sample. They've won five in a row with the Mountain West revenge spots on their home court. Home favorites between a five and an eight uh, are sitting there in a uh, 30, I'm sorry, uh, let me see that number, seven and one in its last eight games. 149 to 138 overall in those spots as well. So we've got some strong trends here. This is the same situation that Utah State faced last night. And uh, the average first half number we're seeing 38 to 32. Numbers getting a little big. So that does kind of concern me a little bit there with the seven. But um, I think the biggest difference here is kind of the differentiator in the way these two teams play. Uh, overall, New Mexico, you know, New Mexico's kind of dummy dirty with the pit. Thought the pit was going to be a bigger home court advantage than it's been here. I, been on record this year saying I like Kansas home court and I like uh, I like the pit and uh, they've both kind of done me wrong in the spot but um, you know on the road in the Mountain West Colorado State one in five situation out there they're losing these games by ten and a half points uh, uh, you know just against upper echelon teams they're just not finding a way to get it done the motivation here has to come into you know you kind of try to figure out what are these teams playing for and it's a big game for Colorado State it's a big game for New Mexico New Mexico being kind of if you look at this conference, probably more of a bubble situation with these teams and the way they're kind of set up right now. They need this team. It's very much a quad one win because of the wins that Colorado State has racked up over the course of the season. Uh, but at the end of the day, New Mexico is 17 and eight, a very good spread covering team out there. Uh, Colorado State sitting, you know, really in second place with New Mexico. So you got two teams that are tied. And uh, it's win or go home, and these boys are already home, so they might as well just get the win. I'm going to double up on this one, too. I'm going first half and full game. Uh, again, those first half numbers, just like that Utah State spot I texted you last night, 38-32, uh, kind of the average spot that we're seeing with this score here. Breaking it in half. I love the opportunity to get this cash on both sides of it. And we're getting it early enough that this numbers it's starting to kind of come back. You kind of touched on that as well. But uh, I expect New Mexico, this is kind of that spot we look for when you're going to capitalize on the first half. Uh, you know, coming in off that road loss, 81-70 to San Diego State, uh, back home, ready to come out firing. They need this game, all the motivation in the world. First half, full game spot here. And uh, minus fours at minus 110s for the first half. And then the full games at minus sevens at minus 110s. Uh, both are on my card. We can get you a minus three and a half at minus 115 if you'd prefer for the first half. Um. The minus four and a halfs are minus one oh, uh, sorry, minus fours are minus one oh five, or minus no, three four. and a half. Minus Just give me the four. They're going to win this thing by seven, or they're not winning it at all. So uh, in the first half, so uh, keep the juice down there. I think they get this job done. Home cooking, as Robert Martin says, I love it. I think they're they're definitely the the spot to jump in here. Uh, Colorado State's definitely pulled some upsets. They've been a dangerous team out there, but. Um, I just think there's more going for him. Free throw attempts, free throw percentages, ability to get the rebounds. Everything shows me that this is a more gritty team in New Mexico. And uh, their scoring average, just so much higher here, 84 to 77 and a half here. I think it's a spot where they're going to come out home cooking, does get this, does get it done, as our guy said there. So let's go. Four, seven. You got it. Let's review all action here from Mikey Money and we'll review uh, everything as well uh, on today's show. But Mikey Money gave us Penn State plus eight, Loyola plus two, Dayton minus two, Marshall plus seven, Miami plus seven, and on the money line at plus two. 50. He gave us the under 143 and a half in Richmond, Rhode Island, and Richmond first half minus one and a half. Evansville plus four at minus 111 and plus 155. Missouri State plus four at minus 108. LSU plus six and a half at minus 114. And the double up on New Mexico first half minus four at minus 105. Full game minus seven at minus 108. Mikey, money, get that cash and I can't wait to rock with you again tomorrow. You get Mikey Money's college basketball looks here on Wednesdays and Thursdays on Betting with the Bag. But Monday through Friday, you get Mikey's action on Last Call, our hit show that leads to tip-off and puck drop uh, as well. Uh, Mikey, excellent work, my man. Please follow Mikey on X at Pimp Slap P-O-D. Mikey, any last words for the Capri support in the show? Tons of fun joining you guys with this college basketball stuff. It's uh, my favorite part of the week. You guys know the deal. 6 p.m. Monday to Friday out there. 
Love getting that cash here. We've had a nice couple. We've strung together a couple of nice days here. We had a 5-0 and Friday, a 4-1 and Monday, and an 8-4 and Tuesday. And uh, we're going to roll it again tonight. we got some hockey out there. And uh, listen, I'll give a little teaser here. I might have the first ever two-unit play uh, for last call tomorrow. Everything's one unit, much like Jimmy does it here. We keep it all nice and neat with one unit, but there's such a spot that I love tomorrow. We're going to start by fading away on him today and try to get that double up spot tomorrow with it. So can't wait to get back involved with you guys tomorrow. College basketball, Jimmy. Thank you. Thanks, Jose. All the guys in the chat and girls, of course, Robert Martin, North Ender, Truth Teller. I'll shout out all you guys later on tonight. You guys know where to find me. Pub Sports Radio. PSR, baby. We're kicking ass and taking names. See you guys real soon. Good luck with the bets. I love it. There he is, Mikey Money. Uh, let's review all action and put a bow on this uh, as well. Maybe we can get Jose Bouquet to jump on with us as well. Uh, but let's review all action. Uh, I left the Sabres. So did C-Mac. We both left Sabres, Habs alone. Ron Crawford spreadsheet play today is on the Flyers in regulation. Uh, I'm on the Oilers minus one at plus 119. I believe the Oilers are the best spot on the board. And C-Mac is on the under six and a half, which I'm very interested in. I mean, the only way the Bruins can play the Oilers is defensively responsible and then take advantage of special teams. But this isn't the Oilers of last year. They're penalty killing 79.4%. Then uh, C-Mac's on the Coyotes and the over six and a half. I want the Coyotes. And I want the Coyotes team total over. I'm looking at both of those spots. And then I got to go back to the Blue Jackets first period. Well, a well that was not kind to me yesterday. Then in college basketball, we had Tone Miggins give us Drake team total. Uh, first half team total over 40 and a half. Also give us Drake first half minus five and a half. But the big play was that team total over 40 and a half. Uh, we have wine time sports, Penn State plus eight, Xavier minus five, Dayton minus two and a half, and Air Force plus six. Morgan Spooner, Oklahoma State plus 10, UNLV minus six, Jacksonville State minus six, and New Mexico minus six and a half. CMAC gave us Penn State plus seven and a half minus 108. Uh, Stimmy OG is also on Penn State. You got Penn State plus eight. C Max on the over 145 in St. Bonaventure LaSalle. He's on the under 140, 153, excuse me, on Coastal Carolina, Georgia State. Then he's on Missouri State plus four with Mikey Money. And he's on Charlotte plus five and a half. Dabby Cab has Illinois first half, Clemson first half, money line parlay at plus 102. He also has Memphis first half minus two and a half and Kentucky first half minus two and full game minus four and a half. BJ's best bet as well was Kentucky minus four. And look at you. Whoa. You running from Whoa. the cops? What else going yeah. on? Yeah. Ice is back on my ass again. Jimmy, you know how it is down here. Man, you uh, you look uh, uh, pleased to be outside. What's the weather like? Is it warm? Yeah, it's lovely. It's uh, 75. It's great. Uh, I'm actually cleaning out my shit because I'm moving out of my parents' house. So shout out yeah. to me. Uh, yeah, you so. found the spot. What kind of, can you tell us a little bit about the spot? Uh, I were an apartment, literally a spitting distance uh, away from sea world. So I'll just have to, and there's going to roller coaster right outside my lovely patio. So I'm just going to hear ah! all day. So that'll be fun. That'll be fun. I can't wait. And then it's fireworks at night for the dog. It's going to be great. How far are you from the South town? Like 20 minutes ish or so. Yeah. So. Yeah, it's gonna be it's gonna be interesting, but yeah, no, great times. But yes, I'm outside because my room is a disaster. Well, congratulations on moving out. That's very uh, very exciting, man. Very exciting. Uh, let's keep with their review, and we'd like to hear what are you jumping on? Uh, Penn State plus eight for Mikey Money, Loyola plus two, Dayton minus two, Marshall plus seven, Miami plus seven, and money line under one forty three and a half in Richmond, Rhode Island. Richmond first half minus one half, Evansville plus four, Missouri, Missouri State plus four, LSU plus six and a half, and New Mexico double up first half full game. Was anything so? Um, Sounds so nice that you moved on it. Uh, I had to move anything today. I should have moved on Utah State with everyone. I felt like fucking an idiot uh, not doing that. Crawford, Taint, Mike. I mean, everyone was on that shit. Um, yeah, I mean, I think, uh, you know, the, for the game we talked about three times today, Penn State was mildly interesting. Um, but, yeah, I'm not moving on anything today. As TJ said, just getting ready for uh, the baseball, you know. I don't think I'll be making any futures, but – i uh, excited for uh, spring training to start here in a day or so, and I will be uh, watching uh, very closely. So can't wait for that. 
I love it. A big season for both of us. We need to bounce back. Bit of a debacle last year. Well, Jose, congratulations. So you're moving on uh, March 1st? Uh, I don't know. We haven't even applied yet. I'm just getting all my shit together. So it's great. It's great. Oh, so don't so worry about it. It's happening. It's all happening. Uh, it's just, you know, we're pulling no. the cart before the horse, just like that the marriage. Sound likely. That doesn't. Uh, Justin McKelvey says party at Jose's crib. They don't even have the crib yet. Don't even have the crib. <laughs> just wait. Just wait. It'll be great. When Palooza comes, exactly one person can come there. It'll be great. You know, it's not a big place. Well, I, I would say congratulations, but you've done nothing and have got nothing. Exactly. Yeah. So, but you know, we're working. It's, it's going to be great. I, my half of my clothes have been in my car for the last like month and a half. Uh, I've been just ready to move out for a while now. So it's, it's, it's great times, but yeah, no, it's happening this week. Jesus. All right. So I <laughs> apologize for uh, congratulating you on the squad ass zilch that you've done. It happens. Yeah, no, I get it. I get it. It's, it's nothing to celebrate, but uh, congratulations on your successes. I'm glad to see <laughs> your help. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah. All right. Ricky Bobby says, Jose going to be sleeping in his car like Craig Mack. Man, um, I don't even know who that is, Ricky Bobby, but that's peace, a good one. Man. Rest in peace to our friend Craig Mack. Uh, Jose, my friend, uh, we have another show in the books. Uh, yesterday was very important. It was a winning day. I guess that's all we want, stack winning days. I find this college basketball card very difficult. At this point, it's just Marshall for me but I'm going to make some moves on NHL and add to NHL. Jose, my friend, can you please uh, bless our action? Of course. And let us into the future, my friend. Of course. Don't forget, it's going to be great this year. Palooza, third weekend in March. We're all planning for it. Brand new. Well, not brand new. Very new looking studio as now you can hear the cops flying overhead to come get my ass right now la migra is coming for my ass right now jimmy i might need a sponsor and, well canada know, let's allows keep, let's, let's keep the cops uh waiting just for another minute and shout out the cappers at uh, ian shaber christopher commentini joey marinaccio nasty nate yeah flavoring you isn't project funk the world man ricky bobby bo jackson uh in that remix man that remix was nice too uh remix was nice too sure. uh thank you guys all of you for your support. Uh, Swiggy, uh, Slow Jams, Arsenal, Andrew G, The Truth Teller, Justin McKelvey, yep. Robert Martin, Londo. Thank you guys, man. Thank you for all the support that you guys uh, give us. Rez Mob, Adabra, Kadabra, Kongs, Clips, Coin, The Juice. Uh, thank you guys. Uh, truly, yep. uh, we have nothing without you. So thank you for your ongoing support, man. Uh, let's keep building. Uh, let's get that cash. Jose, can you please let us into the future? Of course. Yes. The, the cops missed me this time, but we appreciate it. Troy doesn't know where he's going to stay. If Palooza, Troy, I know, I know a place, Troy, I know a place. Will we have furniture? Will we have a second bed or a bed frame? Probably not, but I've got a roof over my head coming soon, Troy. So you can stay with me, buddy. I got you. But let's go, everyone. It's going to have a good day. Jimmy needs this day. We heard him say yesterday he needs it bad, and God damn it, I'm cheering for you, Jimmy. I believe in you, and let's fucking milk those motherfuckers. Leche, a los bookmakers.